Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadence, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Huzzah! I learned a long time ago that there's no sense getting all riled up every time a bunch of idiots give you a hard time. In the end, the universe tends to unfold as it should. Plus, I have a really large penis. That keeps me happy. You look goofy. <laughs> Is there a problem, people? No problem at all, Mrs. Kennedy. We were just discussing uh, ideas of what to do with the new Prince Eric movie. Put a chicken in it! Make her gay! Uh, yes, Miss Kennedy. Uh, some of the execs are just expressing that maybe... Well, well, that maybe we should go a different route than we did with Indiana Jones. Fuck Indiana Jones! Put a chicken in it! Make her name it gay! Just me. Just me. Taking care of a little business. Before we get to take off the vacation. Actually, I have a lot of business to take care of before uh, I take off to Vegas. How are you, everyone? Uh, sorry, Eric. I probably should have given you a heads up about this. It was a last minute decision. Uh, it was this or Saturday morning. And it's like, I got to make a video before I go. So uh, classic boomer. That's right classic boomer um yeah i was gonna probably make one in vegas but uh female silver surfer thing came out so yeah that's gonna be my next video 
big surprise. I'm sure it's a sh- it's shocking to you. Vegas is next week, Max. Vegas is next week. Uh, first meetup is Wednesday. Second one is Thursday. Chris is doing something with uh, Film Threat on Tuesday, all at the same location, the Millennium Phantom Bar. Uh, there's a waiting list. Uh, you have to email to get on it. Uh, Gary at nerdrotic.com. Uh, if there's any last minute cancellations, we'll let you know. Uh, Melissa's handling that. Melissa's handling all that. Hello, everyone. Axe 1631. Uh, no face JF. Uh, Eric K's here. Not another dime. Uh, smooth a DJ. Hang on. I've got to sneeze. Sorry. When you sneeze with a beard, you can you can never be too sure. You know what I'm saying? You could just never be too sure. <laughs> Charlie. Um Dare Bear, Mad Dog 375, Jack O'Neill, Eric Stratton for 777 says, uh, can you get me a deal on X-ray Girl's new product? She's on a live now sh- uh selling her sexy Asian simulator. Uh no, <laughs> I am not affiliated with X-Ray Girl's sexy Asian simulator. What is she playing a game and doing squats or something like that? You go, girl. You go, girl. But thanks for asking, Eric. Sorry. What's up, Prater Phoenix and Max Redstone? Legalize adulthood. Brian T. Ah, Toy Fanboy, you're in the right place. Destructo Disc, Ryan N, Trim, Odinson, and and 99M, of course, Smoothie DJ, which I think I already said hello to. Uh, White Rat, I'm going up here. And uh, Paul Turner, Surf Her, yes. Silver Surf Her. All right, we're going to get right to it. <clears throat> we got a lot to go over. lot to go over uh, as we as we do. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. I can never say thank you enough. Uh, attitude of gratitude. It's the best gig I've ever had. Uh, having tons of fun. Mocking Hollywood is uh, the joy of a lifetime. I would like to cover some good stuff too. And um, depending on how Shogun ends, pretty good so far. Pretty good. Pretty good episode. Effed up episode um at least the ending was uh and uh yeah i i'm enjoying it i like the gentleman a little bit more just because it's more fun but like uh dude shogun's like really well made really well made good stuff uh we are occasionally gonna get good stuff i mean like you gotta give like, like netflix is the clear winner because they have variety right they'll put up shit but i think all we've ever asked for is a little balance <laughs> You know, so they'll put something like damsel out, which is complete shit. And then gentlemen, which is great. As long as there's some balance in the world, you know, I, I, I would love for us to go back to just good old fashioned bad movies like Madam Web. <laughs> that those, those are fun. At least you can have fun with those. Right. Uh, not just stuff that's freaking preaching to you. Now, uh, there's a lot out there that like, it, it, like I said, Woke isn't going to go down with a fight. And Bob Iger felt emboldened yesterday, really emboldened yesterday, to where he goes out and the 73-year-old former weatherman who just discovered that gaming was popular with children is going to start lecturing us on, I don't think some of the people out there know the meaning of the word woke. Bro, you're a fucking grandpa. You're 73. You're, you're fucking 73. You're so out of touch with your audience with your core audience at Disney, uh, shut the fuck up, Bob. (laughs) Freaking Bob. Thanks for watching, Bob, or your assistant's watching. Uh, Yeah. He's too busy taking two showers a day in his office. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, know, even Bill Maher out, once in a while, Bill Maher will say something and people, that makes sense. And that's fine. But they're all out of touch. Bill Maher was telling people, oh, the economy's not bad. You just need to, you know, Pull your boot straps up, people. Get over it. When was the last time Bill Maher was at fucking Target? When was the last time he went and grocery shop for himself? 
was the last time he drove his car into a parking lot, found a parking space at a grocery store, walked into the grocery store and picked up his own fucking groceries and bought them. I'm guessing decades. I'm guessing decades because that guy's a fucking stoner and he doesn't leave his house. All right, let's get to it. Jason R for $10. This is from, uh, oh, I guess I should address this. Sorry. <laughs> so many things have transpired since then. Um, Friday Night Tights was uh, yanked off of uh, YouTube. Um, I've talked about it on other streams, but just in case you guys haven't seen it, I didn't bother fighting it. Uh, you know, um, there was a lot in there that could have, uh, yeah, we, we started out the not, uh, we were monetized and then we were demonetized. And I was like, fine, whatever. And then we were age restricted. I'm like, fine, whatever. I consider it a win considering this episode is still up and then they yanked it. So, um, so it already been reviewed a couple of times. So I'm guessing mass flagged or some, some bullshit like that, whatever. Uh, and that can happen. A lot of times it just leads to demonetization. I, I got a hold of my, uh, my rep and, uh, he told me, uh, cause there's something in uh, that Perry put in the intro. <laughs> that was most certainly one of the reasons, but, um, I probably could have clipped that and had it put back up. But then my guy said, yeah, there's, there's more than one thing. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it. So I put it on Twitter. So if you haven't seen it, you're wondering where it was. It's on, it's pinned on my Twitter account. It's on rumble. It's, uh, apparently on Odyssey an account. I completely forgot. I had <laughs> somebody said you're on Odyssey. I'm like, Oh yeah, I am. Huh? Okay. Um, and so it's, it's in those three places. Of course it's on Spotify. If you want to listen to it, uh, Apple music and audible in its entirety and it's lovely entirety. And we'll just get back to it tomorrow. No guests tomorrow. It's, uh, just us, uh, there's a lot to talk about though. Uh, and there wasn't a ton of entertainment talk, but, um, I think it's a good example of just kind of letting the show go where it needs to go. And don't blame Gundam. <laughs> Poor Gundam was getting the blame for it. He did not, but Gundam was great. Uh, he's always great. I can't, we need to have him on more. He's so fucking funny, but, um, no, it was, uh, I'm pro I'm guessing, all of the talk about gay black rappers for about an hour. <laughs> I probably had something to do with it. Uh, probably some of the talk about the manual and automatic transmissions too. I'm guessing that probably had something to do with it. Oh, black girl gamers and all that. Uh, apparently other people who are talking about the black girl gamers thing in particular, were getting their uh, video. I think uh, hypnotic, something happened to hypnotic. Go check out hypnotic. Great channel. And I believe something happened to side scrollers. So, uh, you bl listen, don't blame Gundam Gund Gundam's good guy. It was our fault. I take full, I take responsibility, but, uh, it, funny episode. My face was hurt and I was laughing so much. I love those kind of episodes. So, uh, you know, they, they roll around once a year or so where we just go off the rails and have fun. And, and the chat was, what sucks is we lost a chat, which was, you know, equally as funny. All right, uh, this we're going to start with the donations. Jason R for ten dollars. If you all haven't heard Helldivers two metal song, you're missing out on a huge dose of freedom. Uh, I'm going to check out that music. I don't think I'm going to play the game, but I, I might play the game. I might. I gotta. I'm gonna get back from Vegas. Uh, I, I'm going to be around at home for a while after Vegas. I don't have any trips planned. I don't think there's Dallas, but that that's like a you know it's not far. John Krupp again. No, not again. A different John. This one's John Krupp, not John R. For $10. Watching these companies panic as they're exposed is more entertaining than anything they put out. Agreed. Uh, the best entertainment Disney has been able to provide is um, all the YouTube videos and what you know, all other social media. You guys roasting them daily. That is highly entertaining. Uh, Clova five for twenty dollars. I'm broke as fuck. Well, oh, you don't have to give a super chat, but a donation. But thank you, thank you. Uh, but I have to drop some cash to ask you guys to cover AMC's Pantheon. It's the best animated show I've seen since Avatar: The Last Airbender. If you haven't already, please give that show a watch. It's so damn good. Hail FNT Pantheon. All right, I'll watch it tonight. I'll take a peek at it tonight. 
after this. Abominable vi vibes for twenty dollars. Uh, Hail Gundam, my favorite role model on YouTube. Hope you escape from New York in one piece. When we, uh, when will we get another uh, vitamin stream? Well, we'll have to ask him. He's streaming every week now, and it's great. His streams are great. And yes, he does need to get to, out of New York. Uh, Crit Nature for ten dollars. Hail FNT. There's uh, there's some hopefully good movies still coming out soon. Uh, Kevin Costner's Western two parter uh yeah horizon i'm interested in that i'm really interested in vigo in uh mortensen's um what is it the dead don't give a fuck or something like that <laughs> he should have named it that the dead don't give a fuck but it's something like that i saw the trailer and i liked it uh independent western written and directed by vigo glad to see westerns make a comeback because we need simple good versus evil stories now yes we do and uh, that movie comes out at the end of May. Definitely going to I'm going to be at both Westerns. Yeah, I'd love to see the Western make a huge comeback. If we got Westerns over superhero films at this point, I'd be completely okay with that. If they were good. Uh, Frank Wolf Connell for $20. Hail all. We need a signal boost for my hubby, a giant nerd wolf. Some of you may know him. His cancer came back. Oh, no. And we need help. And there's a GoFundMe. I'll check out the GoFundMe. Hang on. Let me see. Oh, I, let's see if I can copy and paste that. I can't copy and paste it. Um, I'll send a note to X-Ray Girl and we'll go over it and then we can uh, shout it out tomorrow. Okay. Frank Wolf Connell. Sorry about that. Fuck cancer. Blast Morian. Morian. I almost said it's moron. <laughs> For $20, hail. I love this community fellowship. By the uh, I'll I'll reset that in a second. As given birth to the Iron Age. Shout out to new author uh Kyra Russell, who published her first novel this week. Congrats. If you like fantasy adventure and good old come of age tale, go check out Treasures of Darkness on Amazon. Treasures of Darkness by uh Kara Russell. All right, so. The fellowship. How did the fellowship start? I hate the word community. I think it's a commie word. I don't care if you use it. I just personally, I've heard it from too many academics. This community, this community. And I just wanted a word to replace it so I didn't have to say it. And I'm like, well, you know, in AA, we call it a fellowship. And in my favorite story of all time, th there's a fellowship. So I'm like, oh, fellowship sounds better. Let's do fellowship. And I'm not the one who invented it for, uh, Naming, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings fans have said that forever, but um, I just adopted that word. Uh, it is not an organization, it is it is nothing. It is not, it is just a different word for community, fans, whatever you want to be. No dues, no fees, no ring kissing, no ass kissing, nothing. All are welcome. Surly SOB for $20. If Az loses any more weight, he'll look like Tom Hanks in the last five minutes of Philadelphia. <laughs> Quick story. Uh, with my first wife, our uh, first date was, our first official date was uh, we went and saw Philadelphia. I, um, I wouldn't see a movie like that on your first date. Just take it from me. Listen to me now. Believe me later. Nicholas Horton. Uh... Uh, it's donated three British pounds. Proper money. Thank you very much. Uh, Donald Deluxe for $4.99. Don't worry, Gary. I still remember when you mispronounced, mispronounced cloud. <laughs> I, I did. I, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. But uh, yes. I. <laughs> you know, don't do drugs, kids. What can I say? Hectech for $10. Congratulations, Nerdrotic Crew, on reaching $1 million. Thank you very much. And awesome seeing Gary on the unsub podcast. That was fun. Uh, we're going to try to get those guys on FNT, or I'm going to try to get them on my channel in some aspect or another. Uh, they do a lot of great work with uh, autism charities. So I fucking love those guys to death. And uh, shout out to Donut Operator. Please give him a sub. Shout out to Brandon Herrera. Give him a vote if you're in the 23rd district of uh, Texas. Uh, two-way advocate, a YouTuber uh, who's in a runoff election with an establishment Republican. 
And uh, yeah. Donetska for five euros. That's, I wonder how the euro stands to the dollar now. I know it was stronger than the dollar, but that's probably when the Brits were still around. Uh, I'm going to start to uh, a, I'm going to start a YouTube channel just so I become successful enough to get invited to hang out with you on your uh, lives like Gundam. Life sucks. Oh, why does life suck? Life doesn't need to suck. You can turn life around. Start a channel. It could be lots of fun. At least you're hanging out with your friends. It's a way to hang out with your digital buddies. I mean, uh, let's be real. <laughs> I, I like my alone time. I, I certainly do. Uh, you have to, to be a content creator, because you're going to be sitting in your fucking room for a long time. And I'm completely okay with that. That's why I loved editing, you know, and that's what I wanted to do when I worked in Hollywood and uh, recognize, yes, I did work in Hollywood for a couple of years. I don't know if many people know that. Uh, yes, I used to own a comic shop. And yes, I worked in Hollywood for two years. I did for Technicolor. Um, so, and I did a lot of work with Paramount and, uh, and Disney. I've been inside Disney studios in Burbank a couple of times. Um, Warner brothers, Sony, uh, but, uh, yeah, I learned quickly uh, and I had an isolating job. I worked from 6 p 6 PM to 6 AM. I did a lot of ghost editing and I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed it. But, um, then there was the people. And I couldn't fucking stand them. So I'm like, eh, you know what? I'll just, I'll just go back. And that was while I owned a comic shop during the recession, when the comic shop was maybe making a dollar, it was barely breaking even. And, uh, I had to, t uh, take on a partner, uh, who did the best he could. Um, you know, and life wasn't great for me at that time. It was a fucked up time, man. Ooh, fucked up time. Uh, but yeah, life sucked for me back then sucked, uh, but, uh, turned it around at least for now. Darth Hawk gaming for $10. Hail Chrissy's one ring. Uh, also to grow your channel, all you need to do is read what DEI weirdos put on the internet. That park place has a lot of channel growth content too. Yeah. I mean, do, do like a libs of TikTok with DEI. Everybody's throwing around the daily show, calling out DEI as garbage while they're calling everybody a fucking racist. Um, yeah. Fuck the daily show. Fuck Bill Maher. Fuck all these people who are pro COVID and pro authoritarianism. Oh, finally, you know, uh, once it's safe, once the wind has changed direction long enough, they're going DEI is garbage. Yeah. Fuck off. Fuck off. Yeah, stop. I, I mean, I, I can't believe a couple of people I, I respect a lot were sharing that video. And I'm like, you, you did you hear it? Did you listen to it? And they're like, well, they're called DEI. Yeah, I'm all, yeah. And they called everybody racist. <laughs> it's the same fucking shit. Uh, Southeastern Kaiju for $2. Gary, reading is fun. Demental. Because he wrote it. Reading is fun. Duh. Mental. Ha <laughs> ha. Sean Calloway for $10. At this point, taking shit about all these woke assholes like SBI feels like booing at a Special Olympics. <laughs> uh, it is. That's why... Um, <clears throat> Gundam's right. Like this version of Gamer Game, Gamergate, like is fun. A little too easy though. Okay. Like the low hanging fruit is about a cunt hair above the ground. <laughs> okay. Let's just be real. They're making it very easy for people <laughs> to, to roast them by just opening their pie holes. Okay. And quite frankly, hey, listen, Disney's been doing the same thing. Disney has been doing the same thing. I, it, it's, it's not rocket science. It is not. It is like, let's, let's just, you know, we used to have to, um, and, and Gundam's got great videos on this, by the way. And so do many others, you know, uh, Jeremy just put out, uh, one on this, uh, last couple of days, there is some ins and outs with this and you have to do some, 
reading between the lines or reading behind the lines, as they said on PVD the other day, which is true. Um, but now, I mean, Libs of TikTok is, is a great example of this. Let's just put them in their own words within context. Go. And you just kind of. <sighs> All right. They done. Okay, good. Uh, and you just clip that out. Upload. You're good. You don't even need to say anything. It's like, wow, I really wanted to expose you, but you did it to yourself so well. I do not need to elaborate at this point. Thank you. Uh, Panda26 for $5. Jeremy from the quartering uh, sent me here to check out this channel. Everything checks out. Hey, hail Jeremy. Love Jeremy. Uh, by the way, best boss in the world. Best boss in the world. Our, our show got yanked. He didn't even yell us yell at us that much. Eric Von Zipper for ten dollars. First time super. I saw I was in. A, uh, by the way, sorry, Eric Von Zipper. I'll restart that again. I just my train. That's how my train of thought goes. I saw I made a quartering video today. Thanks, Jeremy. You're all right. Eric Von Zipper for ten dollars. First time super chat. <laughs> Let me do some Gary splaining. Gary saying he will have his words written before he gets to Vegas equals Gary will be late to, to Las Vegas. Love you. Mean it. Uh, that's fucking true. I cannot deny that at all. Um, so planning for Vegas. We I have the meetups planned and we're doing Friday night tights from the Salty Nerd Podcast Studios. That's all I have planned. Everything else is open. The reason it's open is sometimes there's stragglers like who can't make the meetup. And what we do generally is we'll probably do it like Friday night or some night. That's not a meetup night, which doesn't leave us a lot of nights. Um, we'll go, hey, we're going to go to Fremont or something like that. Meet us here. And it'll be last minute. Now, I'm not saying that's where we're going to meet this time, but uh, that's kind of what we do. That's kind of what we do. Uh, missed for five British pounds, proper money. Long time lurker. First time super chat. Thank you for what you do. You're welcome. Thank you for supporting us. This is the best episode so far. I have not laughed so much in a long time. It was uh, lots of fun. Lots of fun. Just want to point out Rumble, Twitter, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Audible none of them had a problem with the episode. They're all up and running and all Odyssey. They're all up and running on those places. Just not on YouTube. Uh, Krizik for $10. Just want to give a shout out to Gundam for putting up with this train wreck of a show. Everyone should watch Gundam's review of Gundam uh, double uh, 83 pure perfection. I uh, watch 99% of Gundam's content. Papa Gundam, shine on you crazy diamond, says Dutch Schaefer pussy for two Australian dollars. By the way, yeah, Gundam deserves a Medal of Honor anytime he comes on with us. Uh, if you're a fan, you definitely need to check out Helldivers 2 Metal Song. It tastes of freedom, says Visual Orchestra for $20. People are raging, raving about it and raging. Uh, when I was a kid, we mocked rap for being short uh, for rapid anal penetration. I always thought it was a joke. Uh, Jimmy Ray for $10. Oh, go look at um, what Jerry Garcia says about rap. Go look at what Jerry Garcia says about rap. Uh, Zenic for 140 Zardozes. Now that Gundam is a VTuber, FNT should have a based VTuber Fox women, uh, Fox woman Kirsch on. Uh, she is basically the Alex Jones of VTubers and is actually one of those who are funny women. The side scrollers crew can back me up on this. Okay. Yeah. I don't like, I'll have a VTuber on if they're funny, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it. It's not my thing, but like, go, go, go get it. It's a huge part of YouTube. So but there's a lot of huge part of like, you know, Mr. Beast, biggest thing on YouTube. I, d I don't subscribe. I don't watch his videos. I don't think they suck or anything. It's just not my, my stuff. Not what I like. Uh, think book for $3. I work out at two or 3 AM. Cause I loathe the public, you know, um, having the gym to yourself is nice. I find, uh, I go, I used to go first thing in the morning, but that's when I was a working man. Now I just kind of roll in at 
one or two in the afternoon and it's pretty dead it's pretty dead during that time so that's i like it uh, i embraced my nerd because y'all thanks mr videoscape youtube mr videoscape youtube thank you for the two dollars oh boy oh okay okay i just my brain had to process this for a minute uh ob pixel for 1999 british proper money fat finally a great show what do you mean finally <laughs> tonight i got seriously entertained wow roll uh r-o-l-f-m-a-o -O. you guys are all awesome pop culture racism idiots rap jokes jeepers what a great show what's a ditty hey fnt and the 199 gary unit uh cheers thank you <laughs> the g unit that's right 50 shades of grace and for two dollars g units are now <laughs> your measure of sugar for kool-aid <laughs> Nick Brony for $1.99. Nerds with an attitude. That's right. That's right. Straight out of Gondor. Let's go. Space Eel for $20. Doesn't say anything, but uh, but just walks away. Kind of like Josh Kelsey. You're doing your best Josh Kelsey impression there. Uh, beefy five-layer husb <laughs> husbando <laughs> for $5. Question for Chrissy. If you were to eat Pop Rocks, would the baby come out with PTSD? I don't know. Did you ever feed Pop Rocks to your dog? I did. I was a fucking bad kid. Okay. <laughs> but it was funny. <laughs> it's fucking funny. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but don't do it. That's fucking awful. Dogs are beautiful innocent creatures uh friday night whites talk rap <laughs> we should have called it friday night whites last week i'll save that one Br bruticus for two dollars <laughs> uh grayski for a dollar 99 figgy night tights oh probably a little gayer than that Shad knows rap like Gary knows gaming. <laughs> Ken Hagen for $10. Probably a little better, to be honest with you. Richard Throbin <laughs> for $10. Damn, it's a Gundam's eyes are looking pretty girthy. Uh, looked like he just witnessed Diddy's diddle. Anyway, I'm at work, so I can't stay, but I'll listen after the shift. Remember to stay horny, everyone. Well, we try. Try. I'm not getting any younger, though. Uh, Sith Cake for $10. You guys talking about Al Pacino? It says Al Pacino, by the way, not Al Pacino. <laughs> he just wants to dangle his dice on Lance's forehead. Junior for five dollars. FNT is my go-to show for the LGBTQ hip hop news. <laughs> we should make that a segment. <laughs> Gay rapper news. <laughs> we could probably do something every week. This week in gay rappers. <laughs> All up in ya. <laughs> There's the inside of you podcast, so we can do the All Up In Ya <laughs> segment. <laughs> uh, is there a Diddy watch out there? Well, like what happened? It just kind of like went away. Just kind of went away big federal investigation fucking homeland security raids both his homes and then so you know uh, you know what when he was raided all the computer all the conspiracy theorists said my brothers and sisters out there uh said don't they're just going to erase the data uh, is there any other explanation is there any indictments, subpoenas, grand juries? I heard all this talk. Nothing. Sweet Baby Inc. detected a Gamergate 2. Point. Gamergate 2 uh, has an X community and a gilded server. Can't send links in Super Chats. X community is easy to find in their search. Oh, well, if they're easy to find, I'm sure uh, 4chan and all the others are on top of it. Uh, I got news for you, Puffy. 
That means you're gay, says Fifty Shades of Grayson. Uh, Fing book for $2. Baltimore from Rivendale to the Gross Ghetto. Baltimore from Rivendale to the Gross Ghetto. Uh, Fing book for $2. Is Eminem a feminine, though? I don't know. Maybe. Rogue for two dollars, and this is why the saggy pants fad was fruity. <laughs> uh, sweet baby ink detail. I, I read that one already. Uh, Richard Pryor said, Once you got cash, you ain't uh, an n word no mo. Says Fingbook for two dollars. He did say that. Uh, Warsmith Korath for a dollar 99 British pounds. Uh, P. Dido, <laughs> P. Dido, Spring Book for three dollars. Texas Hold'em is a terrible song. Old Renaissance Nerd for four ninety nine. When Jeremy read uh, Lucia's tweet, my mind went to Blazing Saddles, uh, the school marm. Uh, <laughs> we the white God fearing citizens. <laughs> <laughs> just when, when the grandma when the <laughs> when sheriff parts trying to talk to the grandma <laughs> she just says up yours <laughs> it's never not funny that fucking movie is genius <laughs> They're the common folk, salt of the earth, you know, morons. Um, fear my call, call of duty skill set. Well, fear mine. As your as your underworld for two dollars, uh, samurai Eraton for nineteen ninety nine. This racism and gaming nonsense reminds me of when articles said Lord of the Rings was what racist in nineteen eighty four. Ah. Uh, is radical alt-right and going to the gym and working out is alt-right. Yes. So uh, it, what he's referring to is uh, Lord of the Rings is racist and fascist. Those those things have been in academia fucking from day one, especially when uh, it started when the hippies all started liking it. And then the, radical, the even more radical professors uh, were, were shouting, even Michael Moorcock, you know, Created Elric. He called Tolkien a fascist. <laughs> Tolkien would just fucking say, fuck you, acid head. Same thing he would say to George. Although I, I like both his authors, but uh, Tolkien was a Chad. All right. Uh, radicalized by FNT. I did not see that coming. Says Bredicus, six for $2. Snoopy Diz. For five dollars, says the art sent uh, sent in makes X Ray Girl look like Majika Dispel from Ducktales. I love it. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Eric Sheedlow for twenty five dollars. Hey y'all, son of a Tardo, laugh here hard near you. Me start my independent gam studio. Whitey rednecks. <laughs> Son of Tardo, look for all kinds of weirdos. Equal opportunity employer. Hail chat. 199. Lock it in. Yay. <laughs> Whitey rednecks. I love it. Papa Gundam is here, is the hero of the working man. He eats all the internet cancer so we don't have to. Always a good addition to any podcast. Keep it up, brother. Hail to the fellowship. Be gross for $20. Hail to you. <laughs> Good day. Today is my B day, so have a drink on me. I must have done something right to be part of the fellowship, which is such um, with such amazing people. You guys are amazing. You are. Uh, you're my heroes. P.S. I love Batman versus Superman, and I don't care that you don't. Um, I yeah, I don't hate it like uh like everybody else does. I mean, I don't consider it a anything. I don't consider it a legitimate Superman or Batman story, but there's things I enjoy about it. Never, never said that I completely hate it. I like the Snyder cut too. 
Uh, half ounce toad face for nine ninety nine. I was wondering when Gundam was going to be back on. Can't wait to watch this later. Uh, Gundam will be back soon. Uh, Gundam, my niece is, uh, and that by the way, that's half ounce toad face for nine ninety nine. Uh, Papa, S Pop a stot for five dollars says Gundam. My niece is constantly trying to steal my noise terrorist Fluffy. I want to know if you're going to be selling the rest of the stock you got back. Oh, the, the, is, uh, did, did he sell fluffy plushies? Didn't he sell those? I don't know. You'll have to ask him one copy of blood for the sun. Please Gundam says Lance corporal waffles for $2 wandering. Idahoan culture for $10. We are in the era of corporate meh dia and meh these. I couldn't agree more. We are in the era of meh. Jackson Cagle for $2. I'm talking over double Dutch. Yes, you are. Uh, Hassa. Ha, I got, I, I see, you see a name like this and you're like, am I about, am I about to unintentionally say something like horrifically racist? And you just got to say it slow. Hassa Digga Jack Dorsey. I. I don't think I said something racist, but I might have. Five British pounds, proper money. Maybe if we treat everyone as though they're non-binary, then everyone will be non-binary. And if everyone is non-binary, then no one will be. That's that's most of it. Most of the vast, vast, vast majority, and I'm telling what telling you what you guys already know of this gender identity thing is complete phase to get attention in a world filled with youth who were broken over COVID lockdowns, who lack meaning in their lives, uh, feel like they have no hope. They can't afford homes, even an apartment or a car. And a lot of them have just fucking given up because of bad parenting. Society has done its share, but like when I was a kid, Homes, home prices were unreachable, unattainable, never could have happened. And here I am. So sorry, lost some place. Canceled my game pass sub last night. Screw Xbox. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh Nom de Plum for a dollar ninety-nine. Yeah, uh, they went out and did something stupid too. Yes, they did. Uh, Vito Prashad for five dollars. Your identity takes a backseat to Super Earth for liberty, for democracy, for Super Earth. Mark Boos for five ninety nine. If Three Body Problem was a weekly release, the boat scene would have made X explode. Yes, yes, and it gets completely lost in the binge model, the boat scene. So it's like it's kind of like the red wedding scene, it, it, red wedding in the shocking amount of death. And 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 how the people died, and how many people died, and what types of people died. It's yes, it would have it would have kind of blown up. Now, what what sucks is it builds up the episode, the series builds. There's one fucking just annoying character, and it's hot Latina super scientist bitch, um, who's just fucking annoying but they wrapped all the annoying in one character and everybody else is pretty is fine everybody else is pretty decent character um and uh because we need women in stem so and it's a it's a like a it's it's a gender and race swap version of a character from the books for american audiences whatever but it builds up really good up to episode five and then six and then the last two are just kind of mm. mm. i i if there was like an ep a season two, like right around the corner, I'd watch it. Uh, if season two of the three body body problem rolls around in like two years, I, I doubt I'll bother. Uh, the raging D head for two dollars, BBG big bitch gamers. Craig will probably take that domain name. I don't know why people, are, Craig, why are you taking domain names? Websites are two thousand ten, bro. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like 
<clears throat> what did I get back? Uh, I got a couple of old domain names back that I didn't think I'd get back. Uh, because they were like nine bucks. I'm like, fine. But I'm like, I'm never gonna do anything with these. Never gonna do anything with these. Uh, but for like trademark, like for nerdrotic, I own, I think, all of them. I can't say all of them. A good portion of them. Just for uh, because it was I was going through trademark and it was before it finalized. So I'm like, oh, shit. I better get all these. Probably don't need to do that anymore, but oh well. Uh FNT diversity consulting. That's what Ryan does, geek. Uh, a hurt. Oh, gigahertz. That's good for five dollars. Gigahertz. One point six gigahertz near the Mesa. Uh, D Roy for a dollar ninety nine. All all F and T member have taken some of Gundam's vitamins. Yeah, what are Gundam's vitamins? Okay. Uh, just enjoyed a glass of Pliny the Younger. Says Jam fifty five for a dollar ninety nine. Uh, oh, odd man out for twenty one ninety nine. Lord of the Rings Two Towers is an Easter movie. It features the death and resurrection of a bearded miracle worker who br uh, brings hope and salvation with the easterly sunrise. Hail the fellowship! Hail the resurrected Savior! And happy Easter! I won't argue with you because there is um. Let's see. The woke uh, really love to use the word coded. That thing is coded with the fucking Bible. <laughs> Okay, it is coded. And mythology. And mythology, but a lot of the Bible. Tons of the Bible. And that's why Amazon had to completely usurp it, subvert it, vandalize it, fuck it over, because their ideology wouldn't allow them to do a proper adaptation, which is really weird because the showrunners are Mormon, supposedly. But I think they're probably, in reality... You know, they might go to church on Sunday and stuff, but in practice, uh, probably about as Mormon as I am, which is not at all. Although I, I would, fuck, I could barely spell and I would have done a better job. Filthy casual for $5. Is it rude to ask for a shout, shout out? No, uh, equivocally, it is not rude. It is completely okay to act, ask for shout outs. I'm fine with that. I know some people get all upset about it. I don't. Uh, hope uh, not to keep up the great work. I'm sorry, Chrissy. I hope you're doing as well as you can. She's doing great, and it's fine to ask for shout-outs. I mean, the ones I see, you know, but uh, it's absolutely fine. Uh, but after, the, you know, not that my shout-out's that great, okay? I, I, I don't feel, like, that's not my attitude towards it, you know, is is, like, I'm not that big of a deal, but, um, if you get one, you know, I got one from Joe Rogan or on Joe Rogan from Kurt Metzger, hail Kurt fucking love him. Talk to him today. Love that fucking guy. He's so cool. Uh, yeah, it's what we, it's what you do with it afterwards. You know, not that it's, we're not that we're imbuing some gift upon you. And it's like, no, we're not. It's totally cool to ask. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, think Disney, you think the Hindenburg blimp. Yeah, that or Titanic. I mean, either one is a good analogy. Crashing and burning, very slow. And as I said before, like, for one, Bob Iger's job was never on the line. Even if Nelson Peltz got there, his job was never on the line. He made it seem that way, but it wasn't. And Nelson Peltz came out himself and said, I'm not going to fire Bob Iger. Um, I think he should have fucking fired Bob Iger. But, like, at this point, why? You know, it's the same argument the exact same argument we have with kathleen kennedy at, at this point like why fire her why fire why fire the titanic after it's hit the iceberg and it's sinking and the women and children are on the fucking lifeboats like or in disney's case uh being groomed or transitioned but uh you know you know the analogy jonathan clements for five dollars feige lucked the fuck out of the Russo brothers. Everything else after the first Avengers was going in a bad direction, but Russo brothers saved their asses. Yes, we are on the 10 year anniversary of winter soldier. Um, uh, a fucking masterpiece when it comes to Marvel. Uh, Captain, Captain America had the best trilogy. 
first Avenger, underrated, great superhero movie. Fucking totally underrated. I love it to death. Uh, I've watched that one second only to Iron Man, right? Uh, I, I, I love that movie. Love Winter Soldier. Fucking love Civ Civil War. Uh, I, it's just great trilogy. And it's like the heart of the MCU. But uh, Kevin Feige took over right around Civil War and uh, had a couple hits and went right downhill. Uh, Y'all keep saying go down with the ship, but isn't it flaming? Uh, it, it, again, it, it could be Hindenburg or Titanic. So it could be sinking or flaming. You can replace whatever one you like. But it's very slow and Disney's not going to like die. They're just not going to be relevant. They they really enjoyed being the top dog. Bob Iger really enjoyed being the CEO of the perceived biggest studio in Hollywood. And right now, as it stands, it is still the biggest legacy. Sorry, just heard a noise. There shouldn't be. There's nobody here. There shouldn't be noises. Um. Uh, legacy studio in Hollywood. Unfortunately, there's a thing called Netflix, which is bigger than uh, it's. It, there's going to be a point where it's bigger than Disney, Warner Brothers, and Paramount, like combined. And that's probably not too far away, as far as producing entertainment. Right? Uh, they're still not. I, I wouldn't see them as an official studio, you know, because uh, I think they have a lot. I think they have a lot now, but they like smartly just have other people do it make their shit and put it out which is fine bob really enjoyed that he's never going to have it again he's never going to have it so i am extremely happy kathleen kennedy and bob Iger are still around let them ride it out it'll be glorious they they they, they at lucasfilm a lot of people in that building at Disney under the tutelage and leadership of Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger took a lot of enjoyment at fucking over and pissing off fans to the point where they started baking it in their scripts. They started leaking shit to the fucking media. They themselves uh, used PR campaigns against their paying customers and took enjoyment in it. Fuck them. Fuck them. We didn't want to be your enemy. You made us your enemy. So, okay, we'll be your enemy. They don't want to be. We just want to enjoy shit. That's all we want to go back to do, by the way. But uh, don't, don't be asking us not to laugh hysterically when you all get fired. Because we will. And that'll be part of your lesson, your very valuable life lesson. And hey, hopefully you'll you'll go out uh, creative, quote unquote, creative DEI executive fucking weirdo producer who just lost your job and you have to go drive Uber like the rest of us when we lose our fucking jobs and have to rethink your entire fucking career path. Maybe you should think and contemplate and not just stare at your navel, stare at your navel that, hey, maybe I shouldn't have been a dick to the people who pay me. Maybe that was wrong, and maybe I shouldn't do that again as I go to trade school. Humility, valuable. It's valuable. Uh, Ryan Daycare. <laughs> uh, Mary, stop crying and eat your fucking Taco Bell before I have an aneurysm. Matthew, sit down. Has anybody seen my Mountain Dew and bourbon? Who the fuck has my drink? <laughs> this is Grayski for $9.99. Uh, Brad Burgess. I hear that Disney is making a new Pirates movie. When the Pirates are gay and they are, assure, they are most assuredly will be, I think they will call it the Butt Pirates of the Caribbean. Hail FNT. Well, um, we, we did hear our friend um, Rachel Leishman, uh, who, I mean... Any but any normal person might confuse her with your average uh, manatee, but um, she's a human supposedly. Uh, she put out a uh, 
a headline saying that uh, the new Pirates of the Caribbean will take care of the one problem. And I'm paraphrasing here that the, the, the original had what, what was the misogyny and my wife, which is funny, my my wife, who's not like into this stuff all the time, lost her shit. And it was fucking hilarious. I wish I was there recording it. And she's all. What gave it away? The fact that they're raping and pillaging, <laughs> they're fucking pirates. They're pirates. They're pirates. You know why there weren't a lot of, there was like a couple and they love to make a big deal. I think there was a Chinese one and she was in the movie. There, there, there was a couple, but you know, I don't know why there wasn't a lot of female pirates um, because they would have been raped to death. And probably were. So much so that they had to have cabin boys. What do you think cabin boys were there for? Wasn't the, the fucking wash the decks, okay? <laughs> this one thing is funny about fucking George R. R. Martin. Uh, he straight up, straight up calls them butt boys in A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, but that's what they were. But man, I, you know what? Bring it. Bring, bring the all-female pirates. Oh, wait, we've had that most expensive porn ever made there's actually a sequel too at the time it was the first i think million dollar porn budget and uh it's called pirates came out like 20 years ago a shad has been an absolute savage lately loving it says uh mcbirdie for two dollars yeah because shad had last two episodes zero sleep like no sleep because of the time change and he i think he wakes I think FNT starts at like five in the morning for him. Uh, yo, Godzilla X Con was fun. You got a fan uh, finally listening to the fans and showed more monsters than humans, showed tons of homage to the old films. Uh, indeed, it did. Indeed, it did. Um, I wouldn't call it good. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it good. I would call it like a good B movie. Like, have fun with it. Like, I I had no problem with it. it. I wouldn't call it good. Especially with Godzilla Minus One having come out before. Totally different movies. I understand if you had fun with it. It, it was like a Saturday morning cartoon. With a girl is the key to everything. Fucking that bothered me. Uh, rip and tear until it's done. Says Copper for $2. Hell. Uh, Matthew Boletti for $5. Part, part five. Oh, wait. I think we already got all these. You have to read that. Hang on. Matthew Belletti, we'll have to get that at the end. Simon Ho for $5. Leslie Headland claims to be a victim because Harvey Weinstein broke his promise to her that if she stayed quiet, he'd let her bag all the leftovers. Oof. Man, that's probably not far from the truth. Uh, more flops than a 70 year old uh, lead alcoholic. Uh, says Aiken for $2. Matthew Belletti. Okay, we're going to read these. And copper, almost everything you watch and consume is controlled by people who hate you. Um, controlled. I think that's a key word there. Uh, I would not completely argue with that. But there are people who are working on it who don't hate us. They just need to speak the fuck up. Matthew Bellotti, by the way, culture, uh, th there's that attitude and I, I get it. And like, you're right. The controllers, the producers, the bankers, the marketing executives, the DEI executives fucking hate us. You're absolutely right. Not every per person who works on those movies hates us, but they have no fucking power. So it kind of makes it irrelevant. The problem is we can't black pill the shit and walk away. For one, I like movies. I like TV. I like comic books. I like books. Now, mostly I read old shit now for enjoyment, um, especially comics. Like comics, full on hobby. Don't review them on my channel. I just fucking enjoy them. That's something I enjoy. And I don't buy new shit. I just do that. Uh, with TV, occasionally, we'll get something new that I like and I'll fucking talk about it all the time, like gentlemen. But it's been mostly shit. And it's mostly shit made by people who hate us. Well, we could just go, 
All right. We'll unsub from everything, which I largely have. Um, and we'll just stop watching and we'll walk away. And it will just get bigger and worse. So you say something. That's all you really can do is say something. And, uh, well, it's taken a long time. I would just like to point out that Disney just had its second proxy battle in a row. The word woke is not really being debated, even though Bob Iger is trying to like bring this argument from like 2015, but he was asked about it openly and unironically at a major event uh, at the end of the year. Uh, Disney movies are completely flopping. Uh, people are going on Piers Morgan. Uh, Kurt Metzger was just on uh, Joe Rogan talking about this stuff. Uh, I forgot what the guy's name is today. Joe Rogan just put a clip that, and in the clip's title was called Disney Star Wars, and they were ripping Ahsoka. Joe Rogan and a bunch of dudes, and they called it Disney Star Wars. So that's the tide turning because people talked about it because people care. They still care. Now, do I care enough? To think Star Wars will turn around? No. Do I care enough to think Marvel at this point will turn around? No. Although I think there's the potential to get a couple of good movies. Fantastic Four will not, and I repeat, will not be one of them. That movie is doomed. It is doomed as the Marvels. It's doomed as the fucking Marvels. And and it's not just the casting announcement. Go look at the writers. Go look at the director. And then since this rumor was correct. From from because by the way the female sales surfer rumor was from months back, then that means I I'm guessing that the Sue Storm as a leader is correct too, and you wouldn't even need that as a rumor. That would just be your automatic guess with Disney Marvel, wouldn't it? Like you would be surprised if Reed Richards was the leader of the Fantastic Four. That would actually be subverting people's expectations. So for most people who are casuals, I mean, if you don't want to give a fuck, that's. The, but that's the hearts and minds we're trying to win. If more casuals didn't give a fuck, that'd be great. Then the, the change would happen quicker. But a bunch of people voted for Iger and a bunch of people who voted for Iger were probably Republicans, were probably uh, people who, who think themselves free speech advocates, but they only pay attention to politics and they don't pay attention at all to pop culture or the entertainment or try to understand it at all. And they just went, well, you know, Disney, big American company, capitalism, got to vote in Iger. Matthew Boletti, this is a five-parter, five-parter, long-time lurker, first-time commenting ever on YouTube. At least on purpose. <laughs> I was planning on writing something elaborate, but instead I'll just say thank you and ramble a bit. Uh, thank you all. Yes, even the Brit that loves men, Shad. Uh, the atmosphere and the camaraderie of the fellowship and the EFAP crew have helped me through some recent and still ongoing hard times. <clears throat> Man, I can't tell you how much I hear that. And I can tell you uh, I've been that person too. Y'all have also inspired me to get back into writing. Good. And I'm proud to say I have finally completed a short story and even published it on Amazon. Excellent. Thank you all for just being genuine. And uh, I almost jumped. In. <laughs> I want to say Christ is King. That's the next one. Sorry. And, but if you want to, if you want to roll with the Christ is King, that's cool too. Uh, inspiring and numbskull like me. Hail to the fellowship. Hail the Iron Age. If you have a spare time, please check it out. And leave an honest review, if only I, I can. And then, uh, what's the title? Okay, Improve My Craft. The Snake and the Fox. It's called The Snake and the Fox by Matthew Bellotti. B uh, I probably said his last name wrong. B-O-L-O-T-T-E. Matthew Bellotti. Ten points to whoever can say it right. Uh, how do you add a link to this thing? Uh, you can't. <clears throat> you can't. I think you can in Streamlabs. If you do a Streamlabs, you can add a link. Well, of course, we have to check that link out first. But I think at Streamlabs, you can add a link. Oh, where's the Crisis King one? There it is. Captain Spire for $20. Christ is King. He has risen. FNT gang safeguard. By the way, this was a good Friday. 
uh, to the Fellowship Trump 2024. Stay armed, stay safe, protect the kids, protect the families. We live in a republic. Bad movies aren't our fault. And Gundam, get out of New York. I've been telling him that for a while now. I think he's working on it. I don't know if you guys know. You probably know this. Gundam comes off a bit nihilist. He's a fucking smart guy. Smart. Funnier than 99.999% of the people on fucking YouTube and comedians today. Uh, musically talented as fuck. His song is so good. Yeah, he should be a rock star. I, Gundam's going to get so mad if I say this. Born at the wrong time, bro. <laughs> if you were born in the 80s, you had a pin on MTV, baby. But look at the bright side. You would have lived longer. You're living longer. All right, we're going to get to the newbies. Holy 64 guys, 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 guys. Okay. How many more do I have left on this? Okay, chat, I want you to remember this. Lance Thrustcock. That's the name I'm leaving off on. We got to go to Lance Thrustcock. So if I go, shit, I don't know where I left off. You got to say Lance Thrustcock. And there's like 36 more. So we're going to get to the 64 new one. You guys are fucking amazing. Bad boys and girls. Pro Professor Savage Dad says, Hail, Gary, can't wait to meet you in Vegas. I can't wait to meet you. Let's do this. Thank you for the $5. Eric K., you're not supposed to be super chatting, dude. Uh, hey, I'll see you and your amazing wife next week. I'll see you next week, brother. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. I, I, I know you get the bad back and everything, but do you do top golf? You, you, Eric, you got the face of a golfer. Don't take that. Don't take offense to that. You just do. Uh, I don't know if you do the top golf thing, but you should come with us. Uh, McCock has gifted five Nerdrotic Live memberships. Thank you, McCock. Don't you, is that Obama putting an orange cock in his mouth? I think there's some symbolism there. I just can't figure it out right now. Uh, Jan Janan K for five Canadian pesos. Gary, y'all should get Esther on FNT. She wouldn't even follow me on Twitter. We don't get a chance to talk before and after, but I would love to. I, she's fucking based. I love her. She is based. She is one of us, one of us. When I went on the first time, I'm like, it's me and Drinker and two women, and we're going to argue about Barbie. I'm like, fuck. And then we didn't argue about Barbie. All of a sudden, I hear Esther's like, fuck this movie. She, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm like, whoo. Uh, she seems like she switched on uh, Chill Lady. Uh, you would love a long, I would love a long combo with her. I would, too. I would too. She's got she's got a lot to say. No, she's she's cool. There's a reason Piers has her on. But yeah, we were on twice. Uh, we got invited back. Hail to Paul. Uh, Paul, the producer out there who helped make it happen. Uh, he is uh, a good dude. A good dude. But I had a good time. We recorded that one last week. So uh had a good time. Hopefully they'll have us back on. They said back by popular demand. So shit. Uh, they told me, uh, because I'm fucking not good at this stuff, the producer was in my ear going, I need you to look at the camera. I'm all, And then I said, sorry, <laughs> on my mic. I'm like, oh, shit. I am not. I am so not a professional. But uh, I promise, Paul, I'll I'll look at the camera more. I, doesn't that make you feel a little uncomfortable, me doing this the whole time? Makes me feel uncomfortable. Uh, but, yeah, thank you. Janan, I hope I pronounced your name right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I took care of my business earlier and I flushed it. Legalized adulthood for $20. I knew somebody was going to say, okay, well, there's taking care of business and there's taking care of business. And then there's taking care of business. And those are three completely different ways of saying it with three complete, completely different definitions. And I'm sure you all got all of them.
Like I said, I got a lot of business to take care of. <laughs> Eric Stratton. Oh, I read that one already. Uh, Legalized Adulthood's a new member. Welcome. Welcome. I, Lucifer, 9199 or 1999 for two Australian dollars. Fantastic soy cuck, rise of the silver sodomite. Yeah, the silver surfer jet. So that's, somebody said that on Twitter. I thought that was fucking funny. The silver surfer jet. Suffragette. For the longest time, I thought David Bowie was saying Surfer Jet City when I was a kid. So we say, back to Surfer Jet City. Uh, AG, AJX Skyline for $4.99. Love how Comic Source uh, is important now when Silver Surfer is involved. Takes place in the 60s. You can bet civil rights in Rosa Parks was mentioned. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I mean, God bless fandom. God bless Robert Meyer Burnett trying to make it work in his head. He's all, listen, she was Shalaba. Shalaba was the silver surfer in Earth X and Alter and Universe X uh, and Paradise X. Uh, she was in four or five issues going out. Dude, I haven't read it in fucking decades. I own it. Um, I sold a lot of those. EarthX was out in 2000. So she, Shala Ball, first appeared as Silver Surfer with Norrin Rad, with Together, which I that, I prefer that, but give me a, well, wait for my video. But um, her first appearance was Silver Surfer number one in 1968. Uh, she's played a part, uh, for a long time, but, uh, as far as female silver surfers, there's the Juno one that everybody rolls. Out. Honestly, I don't even think I fucking read that comic. I know. I, I know I've heard of her, I, but this isn't the Juno silver surfer. So all these fucking wiki experts, that motherfucker, I, I have been bookmarking them for my video. I've been fucking bookmarking them. And, uh, all I've got to say is show me your fucking long boxes. Show me your fucking long boxes. Juno fans. Juno Silver Surfer fans. Show me your fucking long boxes. I damn near, I got so fucking pissed. I almost went to my storage to take a picture. I haven't even been to my storage. My wife has been to my storage. I haven't been to my storage. The movers took my, uh, the comic collection took up a lot of the moving van and they moved it directly in the storage. By the way, it's one of three. It's one of fucking three. And I'll just take a picture of one. And I'll dig out my complete run. And I mean complete. As a matter of fact, Silver Surfer is the first character I had a complete run of. Because at the time, when I was younger, it was cheaper and easier to obtain. The most expensive issue you know, was the 49, 50, 51 of, uh, of Fantastic Four. But at the time, you could still get his 1 through 18 run that was mostly double-sized issues. Uh, pretty cheap. Pretty, I mean, like, relatively cheap for a guy in his 20s, you know, working two jobs, modest rent, you know, and uh, saving up. And then, of course, the... The 80s run was pretty cheap. I get those dollar bins for the most part. And I was able to piece together. Uh, by the way, I'm a huge Defenders fan. He was part of the Defenders team. And I got a full run of Defenders, although he's not in every one. And then I got all his special appearances and Marvel Team Up and Marvel 2 and 1 and all the other fucking shit. And I put together a complete, like, first run American printed Silver Surfer run. That's because I'm a completionist. So I have my boxes that are just Silver Surfer. That's it. He's in my top five favorite characters. Fucking cool character. Uh, it's been said a lot of times. I know Stan Lee changed his mind a lot. Stan, uh, Silver Surfer was Stan Lee's favorite character. He was just fucking cool. And, and when we were kids, when we were kids, we used to go outside. Remember that? Remember outside? We used to go outside and play superheroes, and I'd be Silver Surfer. I'd get on my fucking skateboard. And you're Silver Surfer. Plus, you're one of the only superheroes who could kick the Hulk's ass. So your best friend always picks the Hulk. You could kick his ass because you're the Silver Surfer. But, but, but according to Twitter, I must have missed in my four decades of fucking comic collecting and my, my decade of selling comic books, 
I must have missed the seminal run of Shala Ball Silver Surfer that ran for a hundred fucking issues, and she is far more iconic than Norrin Rad. Shut the fuck up. Fucking tards. And it's this one's fun. This one's fun because they're so objectively wrong on everything they say. You know, uh, when these motherfuckers are coming to my mentions and they're like, well, actually, by the way, you fucking start a sec sec sentence with these two things. Well, actually, or as a, you gay. Or a woke white woman. Or both. Well, actually, she's an established character. Yeah, okay. All right, big brain. Tell me how many issues she was in. The Shala Ball Silver Surfer. Not the Juno female Silver Surfer. Tell me how many issues she was in. It's a handful. And I'm and I'm going off of memory. So four, five? And Juno was probably in a miniseries at some point. Maybe made a couple appearances here and there. So well, I'll be nice. Four, five, six, seven, maybe ten. I don't fucking know. Don't care. Compared to Norrin Rad appearances, which I don't have an exact number, but it packs three long boxes. Three. That went on too long. Oh, we know they didn't do this, but would it be okay uh, with Silver Surfer if they had just made her super sexy jokes with it, like the old She-Hulk comics? Uh, a, a, a female Silver Surfer. Okay, I don't want to ruin my video. Dragon Knight's Glare for $10. I'll make it as simple as possible. Make the Fantastic Four movie about the fucking Fantastic Four. Four superheroes, not Franklin Richards, not Silver Surfer, no Silver Surfer, no Franklin Richards, no Shala Ball, no Zen La, no Dr. Doom, no Galactus. Maybe you introduce Dr. Doom early on and towards the end, but he's not the central focus. You focus on the Fantastic Four. Fuck it. Bring in the Mole Man. I'm fine with the Mole Man. You can make the Mole Man good. It's it's the same argument I had for James Gunn's DC Superman. Make a fucking Superman movie. Don't be adding multiversal timelines. I'm fine with the period piece. Make it a 60s movie. And don't make it some racial fucking allegory bullshit. Just make it fun. Doesn't need to have a message in it. Just make it fun. And then you might be successful. Reed is the leader. He's the smartest man in Marvel. He's got, you know, sometimes an, an estranged relationship with, not estranged, but strained relationship with Sue because he gets a little autistic and into his work. But he still loves her. She loves him. You got, the, the biggest conflict is the thing. That's your conflict. You want conflict, it's the thing. Then you have Human Torch for the levity and the fun. You know, if you want to introduce something, somebody early, uh, fucking Namor. Oh, you fucked him up. And he's Namor. Yeah, just make a Fantastic Four movie. If they introduce multiversal bullshit, if they give us Franklin Richards fucking Galactus, for one, nobody's going to know what that fucking is. And you introduce female Silver Surfer, which, and you're going to release Norrin, do the, introduce the Norrin Rad one later. Well, you just fucked up your first appearance of the Silver Surfer, just like you fucked up your first appearance of Reed Richards by having his head fucking blown off in a Doctor Strange cameo. So it's already been fucked up. And then you go look at the third director they have for this movie third and uh because they can't get one uh they couldn't find anybody to play reed richards that's why they had to go with the uh, disney he might as well be like 
a Mickey Mouse Club Pedro Pascal. You might as well just fucking have fucking Mickey Mouse ears all on all the time. And um, yeah, the rest of the casting was fine. I don't really have a huge problem with it. Not crazy about uh, Ben Grimm's casting, but you know, could have been worse. But that's where we're at. It's like, oh, it's it's fine. It could have been worse. It could have been a gay black woman in a fucking wheelchair. It's like that's our expectations were low, but holy fuck. But Dragonite's glare. I, I love how fans try to be positive. And yes, if they, uh, you know, it, it, it it's too late to do like irreverent humor. Cause that's all it has been. Now it's a, it's a really, instead of irreverent humor in the MCU, it's an irrelevant joke. The surf her. What up Gary? My rig, uh, 199 praise. Ah, rah. Yo, Joe. Thank you. Cole Hauser. Ah, rah. McCock. It's gifted five. Uh, uh, wait, sorry. Five dollars says I'll send 20 gifties. Would you call Ryan live and call him gay? No, I mean, I don't even have my phone with me. I, I mean, I like to call Ryan gay on my free time, McCock, but honestly, yeah, my phone's not anywhere near me right now. But uh, tell you what, maybe before the show's over, I'll call somebody and call him gay. Okay, I'll call I'll call another YouTuber gay. I'll call him on the phone. Thank you, Macaw. But I'd have to literally run down. Yeah, I know it's crazy. I don't have my phone with me at all times. I left it downstairs. Uh. You contributing anything creative to the Iron Age? Asked Sir Ubison. Uh, no, not really. I mean, like, you mean a comic book? No. I'm writing a book. Um, I, I mean, I guess that's creative. It's autobiographical, though, so it's not creative in the fictional sense, but uh, I am writing a book. But as far as, like, writing and doing a comic and publishing it, uh, no. it would. Uh, I couldn't do that and uh, YouTube at the same time. I have ideas. Maybe when I retire or I'll just give them to somebody if they want them, if they want them. But uh, yeah, the only thing I uh, hopefully contribute is a few laughs at my expense. Thank you, Sir Obasan, for $2. Uh, do you think there's cat calling in space? That the Silver Surf her has to deal with, maybe <laughs> Kawibo for four ninety nine, probably, and then she'll deal with it, and then uh, maybe they can send her like fifteen minutes of the movie around that. Uh, maybe maybe a nihilus. A nihilist sees her flying by and said, I'd love to see that in my half pipe. Something like that. I don't know if that's proper, but. I'd like my half pipe to be in that or something. I don't know, but you'd be saying you'd have a half pipe. I don't know if a major villain in the MCU, even though he's like kind of an insect, um, would would have a half pipe. You guys work on that. Just the poor smuck, schmuck shouting out the masterpiece fantasy story with regular storytelling and morals. Uh, Freren Beyond Journey's End. It's L-O-T-R esque. It says Dark 8182 for $5. Thank you. Big Boss SB for $4.99. At this point, the MCU should just go full tilt or tit. <laughs> tit would be nice. That would be new. And make porn spoofs. As these gender swap characters as movies, better chance to get the butts and seats. Actually, Axel Braun is like way ahead of him or was. I don't know if he's still doing movies or not. But uh, yeah, yeah. 
you know what? I was going to kind of, you know, I was like, ah, the MCU's had its time. Like you, it's out in the world. You guys still use it, but I was really not going to like throw it on titles anymore. Wow. That's fucking changed. <laughs> uh, I can't wait for silver surf her to team up with number and Dr. Strange mom and the incredible Kulk. cuck. Why did I say Kulk? cuck? Sorry, Lynn green. By the way, I can't wait for, I wait for it either. Thank you for being a member for four months, four months. Awesome. Patrick Del Toro for five dollars. I like Julia Garner in Ozark, but clearly Disney has no problem hating the fans and losing money. Nope. I think uh, I I don't watch Ozark, so I heard it's good. Uh, but you know, um, what's her name? You know what? She's as good of a choice as Rhea Seahorn for Better Call Saul. Why not make her Silver Surfer? She's a good actress too. She a good. She could be a good Nor and Rad. No. And you know they're gonna flip it, right? So they'll be in some multiverse, and they're gonna flip it, and it's and it's gonna be Shalabal who sacrifices herself for Nor and Rad because it's intersectional feminism rules the day at the very woke Disney. They have no idea, retards. They are fucking retards. Jeremy uh, said it. I uh, seconded it. And many people went on with that. They are fucking retarded. And they waited till after the vote to announce it. Can't wait for my F favorite FNT streamers to get richer ripping silver slurper. <laughs> We're winning. Keep it up. Oh, there's a lot of shit. That, dude, we still got Ironheart. We still got Agatha. We we still got Black American Captain Falcon. A lot of shit coming up. I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, Thunderbolts. Which will probably be the best of the worst. Which will still be shit. Uh, thanks for being... The tip of the spear and calling out the woke idiots that attack and steal our nerdy way. Remember when uh, Noonie wanted to be us. They wanted to be us. Uh, believe in yourself is a new member. I like that name. Thank you, Mad Dog, for being a member for three months, by the way. Christian, five Australian dollars. Hi, Gary. Just wondering, what are your thoughts on Billy D. Williams as Harvey Dent, even though he was race changed? I was fine with it. Cause he's fucking Billy D Williams. So if you put the right character in the right part, I'm it's okay. I think, uh, and I've said this in the past when 89 Batman came out for one, like I could make an argument. I can make an argument that at the time, Billy D Williams as Harvey Dent made more sense than Michael Keaton as Batman. Arguments can be made, but we were just happy to get a fucking Batman movie. The fact that there was a Batman movie was crazy. I was like, we're actually getting, for one, you go, why did it take so long to get a Batman movie? Well, Batman wasn't always more popular than Superman. Superman was the most popular for the longest time. Batman being more popular than Superman is, I mean, relatively recent. Okay. In the last four or five decades, but, uh, Superman ruled before that. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a problem with it. I had more of a problem of it not being <laughs> Billy D. Williams. And when Tommy Lee, when we heard the casting, when I heard everything about Batman Forever before we saw a single frame of footage or a photo, when I heard the casting, when I heard Joel Schumacher was directing, Val Kilmer, Tommy Lee Jones, I'm like, this movie's going to be the fucking greatest thing ever. And then it wasn't. It's fun in a novelty kind of way, but it's not a good movie. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones, the biggest fucking disappointment. If he if he played it straight, and they played the movie straight, it would have been fucking cool. They, if they just dialed it down, made it a lot less gay for one, and dialed it down a little bit, uh, it could have been good. That was a good cast. 
Great cast. Uh, Gundam stream last night with Kirsch was hilarious. Uh, was not far off of last week's FNT. Check it out. Uh, he's fucking great. Gundam's great. Uh, Ahoy, Gary. Uh, by the way, Haggy, thank you for the $5. Ahoy, Gary. Uh, great episode of FNT. Thank you. On Piers Morgan, I found it hilarious that the dude arguing that that there isn't a culture war slash gamer gay to promotes his book and called it the case for cancer culture. Uh, Piers was like that. You got to change the name of that book. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, th that guy was a limp-wristed fucking moron grifter. <clears throat> and I guess th they talked over the part where I made fun of his, uh, when he called, when he said, well, aside from the misogyny, I'm all, I go, misogyny, oh my God, <laughs> at the mic, but everybody was talking. You go back, I say it. Uh, fuck that, but it was great. But he's trying to like, bring out the black, everybody, the Black Panther. Oh, you mean from 2018? That's pretty much when it came out, 17, 18. It's a movie that's like eight years old. Is that what you're going to bring out for uh, your argument? Really? Because I would say recently will be three years. The last three years, I think that's being fair. Last three years, it's been fucking shit. Longer than that, actually. We're coming up on... Five years since Endgame ended, right? Endgame came out in what was uh, Endgame's? Uh, yes, we are very close to the five year anniversary of Endgame. What have you done for me lately? That is, uh, that is Hollywood. Come play Hell Divers 2 with Dermy Wormy and I. Uh, someday, maybe, Professor Savage for $2. Someday. Hail all. I hope everyone has fun and a safe trip to Vegas. I was wondering how many times you will have Dan sing Man Buns Are Gay. See y'all in Dallas. I mean, he's just got to sing it the once, you know, and he's putting it on his channel. He'll probably make money from it. Uh, general duality for $5, especially with how beautifully I will write it. f and can't be stopped. You guys rock. Thank you, WRC, for $5. I appreciate it. Aurora Uplinks for $5. What's your opinion on certain Asians crashing boats into bridges? Uh, I am against X-Ray Girl driving uh, container ships. Uh, by dropping only one anchor that will swing the barge into the bridge support. I don't know enough about it, and I was thinking, hey, it's an accident until two things happened, Aurora Uplinks. Uh, the black box was missing mysteriously missing two minutes of the most important part. And the FBI immediately said they did an investigation and uh, there's nothing to see here. So now I think there's something up with it. I absolutely do. Baltimore losing vital bridge and cargo Harbor. Yes. I would call it a prelude. Possibly. I hope not. Richard Throbin. Look at that. Freaking. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> <can> picture, dude. <laughs> I knew something moved my sacred sack. Glad to see you on tonight. Stay full masked, everyone. Stay full masked, baby. Even the ladies. Even the ladies. Uh, Gary, it's me again. I'm not a comic book nerd, but I have read several of the comics for Marvel and Star Wars, and they're not half bad. Then I realized maybe the stories should be like the comics since Disney sucks at creativity. Well, Joshua Henderson, they own all the rights to those comics. Thank you for the $9.99. And they still adapt them like they're Helen Keller, except a gay Helen Keller. Maybe she was gay. I don't know. But um, yeah, just read the comics. I would say just read the comics if you want some enjoyment. I wouldn't hang on for Hollywood to be able to provide that. Uh, it's now going to be other studios. You know, you know who was the happiest? You know who was the absolute fucking happiest with um, the vote yesterday? Warner Brothers, Universal, even Paramount, which is about to be sold, Netflix, Amazon. They're the happiest. 
they were like, yeah, Disney, keep going, baby. Keep doing what you're doing. My favorite part of the streams is trying to identify all the figures on the wall behind you. It reminds me a lot of my collection room and of better days of entertainment. Chris Nicholson for $10. They're kind of out of focus. And you never see like those, right? Because my head's always in the way. But yeah, I would just like start at one point and then if you want to get fancy, you could try to figure out whose legs those are, right? Uh, there's Electra right there. But that's like uh, uh, Daredevil 190 Electra, like in heaven. Um, then there's Bullseye, Iron Man, Iron Patriot, there's Data, Iron Spider Man. I think I got. I don't want to turn around and cheat. I'm pretty sure that's Amazing Spider Man. Spider Man. Uh, you can see there's a Medicom Cyclops right there. I could do this all day. There's George Lucas. He's flipping you off. I don't know if you noticed it or that or not, but he's flipping you off. He's flipping all of us off. I got my money, fuckers. <laughs> That's what he's doing. There's um, Raimi Spider-Man Mary Jane right there. Baron Zemo, Punisher, Ant-Man, right in between them. That's Ant-Man. Those are all Marvel legends. Uh, wandering Idahoan culture for $10. Why was there not the obvious follow-up question to Iger? So, what does woke mean? We are living in the era of media and mavies. Hail the fellowship. Yeah, it's right now they're forced to dial things back, which means it's going to be just as bad, but slightly less woke for a while. And it's going to be just really dog shit. So now you have an opportunity where people want more. People want more sophistication. They want more sophisticated storytelling. By the way, I started this channel as like, believe it or not, despite my background, as doing something more adult, right? So um, covering genre, but what was happening in the late 2010s, or right up until everybody lost their mind in 2016, a lot of really exciting stuff was happening in a genre. They were trying new fucking things, you know, like, uh, like Alter Carbon came out, Counterpart came out, uh, even the first season of American Gods. They were doing some weird shit that was fun. They were doing some weird shit. That was fun. First season of Umbrella Academy. First season of Westworld. We can go on and on with this shit. It looked like a golden age of television. Uh, Game of Thrones was still pretty good. Was still kind of good. Um, there was a lot of fun stuff. It was just a good time. Dread came out and flopped. And we're like going, how? How? How does this movie flop? It's so fucking good. You know, and there were some shitty remakes, but like, you know, there was Robocop remake and it was shitty, but it wasn't woke. <laughs> it was shitty, but it wasn't woke. And that's what I, I would just love to go back to that. Right. But they were trying different fun things. And I just wanted to cover that the, uh, specifically um, premium television. Like Doctor Who was still kind of good. It was way back. We're talking before time. So when you get something like Shogun, which would have probably been an above average series 10 years ago, now looks fucking great comparatively to everything else. Hi, guys. I wanted to say I went to church with Mike Allred when I was a teenager. Uh, cool dude. His house uh, was rad too. Lots of posters and stuff. Was he? Um, is he Mormon? I know he did the golden plates, but I don't think it was a. I don't think it was. A, it was Mike Allred, right? Who did the golden plates comics? I, I remember selling it. I don't think it was like nice to the Mormons though. I can't remember. I can't quite remember, but. Uh, 
I like Mike Allred as an artist. I do. Um, that Silver Surfer comic, I believe that's his art. I heard his shit, and I I wouldn't watch it, but like I like some of his style. I do. Madman, it girl. I do like his stuff. Not as good as the late great Darwin Cook. R.I.P. That guy was a fucking mad genius, man. Uh, Aurora Uplinks. Uh, you know what I want? I want a Star Wars movie that's as good as Starship Troopers. I can handle cheesy if the action is fun and the dialogue is snappy. Exactly. What movie does everyone love now? Fifth Element. Is it the most sophisticated movie you've ever seen? No. It's an adaptation, basically straight up ripping off the end call. And, uh, and Valerian, basically. And, uh, and Mobius. I even know, I think he was involved. Um, and it's just fucking fun. So if you did something like that and just made it fun and, uh, you know, didn't fill it, I'm mad, and, I'm, and it's in my head because I see it in the next Super Chat, Max. Didn't fill it with a bunch of cunts. Uh, it would be fun. And that's men and women too, by the way. It's not just women. Uh, DEI, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. Cunt hairs included. Rest in peace, Dale Earnhardt. When he died, um, half the mechanics at the shop I was working at called in sick. Didn't show up. Didn't show up to work. Roar Uplinks for $5. I just want to have the story focus on a really great Star Destroyer model. Tell the story of the crew on a mission. Give us a great world building, please. Yes. Uh, I think you're going to have to do that now. Hey, there's a big deal. They just announced they're going to do Tales of the Empire which are going to be some shorts. That's what they're coming out with on the 25th anniversary of, of the prequels. Some short cartoons. And it looks, they're introducing Darth Vader again. It's like, it's like, I like Darth. I think they probably should have done a Darth focus thing a long time ago, but that ship, uh, that Star Destroyer has taken off. With all the success and notoriety revolved around the, you and the FNT, how can you call yourself an idiot with a camera and a microphone? Congrats on one million sub, by the way. Oh, very easily, Sir Ubisoft, for $5. I am a fucking idiot with a camera and a microphone, and I cannot explain a lot of it. I'm grateful. Uh, I, I put a lot into this. Um, it's really fun, but I'm a fucking idiot. I'm an uneducated idiot. I was kicked out of three high schools. I only, uh, what? I, I was kicked out at the beginning of 11th grade. So I, like I was a 10th grader, basically. I have a 10th grade education. Um, and then I went back and finished high school on my own, like through a mail order high school later. Just, just, I did it for my mom. I honestly could give a fuck, but my, it was really important for my mom uh, after I got out of prison and stuff, uh, she, she's the one she paid for the course. So like straight up guilted me into it. I'm like, well, fuck my mom spent like 1500 bucks on this one. I've got to do it. I can't let her down again. You know, I've let her down so much in life. So I finished it for my mom. I did it for my mom. She was proud and I have it now. I have my diploma. I think I got that in 1996, 97. And she was super proud of it. She was super happy, and that, that's that's what I did it for. Uh, testing your soundtrack, Kung Fu Goldsmith. Oh, just testing your... Oh, fuck. Come on. Whoa. Testing your soundtrack, Kung Fu. Goldsmith or Horner? Goldsmith! All day long because of the Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone, baby. Goldsmith. Horner, fucking awesome. No disrespect to Horner, but Goldsmith is only this far behind. And I mean, you want to talk about cunt hairs? John Williams. You want to hear years and years of great fucking soundtracks? Go just look at, go look at Jerry Goldsmith's library. Look at how many different themes he did for Star Trek. Look at how many Look at how, many, how much shit he actually worked on that was fucking awesome. Right back to his original Twilight Zone soundtracks, which you can still get, 
um, from uh, the 60s, from the Rod Sterling run, the first run. I'm trying to see. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Twilight Zone, baby. Twilight Zone. But I like Horner a lot. All right. May he rest in peace. Greetings, Gary. Since Batman the IP will enter into public domain in the next 10 years, do you think it would be prudent to uh, for content creators like Ripa to start writing stories now? Hail FNT. Uh, Barry McCockiner. Barry McCockiner for $10. Um, sure, if you got the extra time. If you're like a, a writer like um, Chuck Dixon who can write us like... Well I, well, I mean, that guy probably writes great comics taking a crap in the bathroom. Probably has. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Uh, that's interesting. I mean, there's certain things that enter the domain. Like, I would, I would love, like, somebody asked earlier, would I contribute to the Iron Age? Sure. I would love to do a Buck Rogers or a Flash Gordon. Either one. I mean, I'd prefer Flash Gordon, but I I wouldn't mind a Buck Rogers I, if I was going to do a property that's that's out there. I think it's out there in some form or another. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. Of course, there's the you know if the shadow ever goes up, then Razor Fist should do it. <laughs> Razor Fist. But uh, fuck yeah, Flash Gordon. I would love to take on a Flash Gordon story. Hell yeah. Hey, Gary, just wanted to say, wish you were my dad. Uh, Jay's Asian son. Well, considering your dad, I'm not surprised. But uh, let's see. Uh, do you miss your dad since he abandoned you? I've got him right here. Hey, son. Sorry I banged your mom, banged Ding Ow, and then bailed. Holy fuck. You look a lot like me. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, how do you appease an Amish nympho? <laughs> Two men and I... Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's terrible. And I love it. I love it. Uh, Sir Ubisoft for five dollars. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to look at this group and not want some of that instant gratification since marketing yourself on YouTube is a game of risk and chance. It is. It is, uh, it is, it is a landmine, um, and it could be, it could be equal parts, a gold mine with the landmine, um, but the only way you're gonna get there is by being fucking real. Hollywood's trying to figure that out. Um, uh, late night, all the old models from the 20th century are failing because they're not authentic like the oscars as an award show could still be alive if it was all fucking ad lib and it was a comedian roasting no scripted like get rid of fucking scripted uh news uh, uh news would be doing better and it is doing better in the independent sphere because it's unscripted because it's unscripted yes it can be reactionary but at least you're getting real emotions you're getting realness and you know sometimes you know People react to things emotionally too soon without getting all the facts. And you got to be careful of that. And I think some of the people who are better at doing that, like, uh, like, like them or not, Tim, Tim pool or PBD, uh, that's where, that's where it's changing. So, um, as far as like, I wouldn't look at it as marketing. 
I wouldn't go like, I need to market this. Um, be you. And see where it goes. And see where it goes. Stay indie. Stay indie as much as you can. Doesn't mean you can't work with the big boys once in a while. Uh, you know, either on a contract basis or going guesting on shows. I'll do that. Uh, I won't work for any of them ever. Like ever. But uh, yeah. It is a game of chance. Rather see a solo movie, uh, Cyclops or Gambit? Cyclops. Samuel L. Jackson for $2. I like Gambit. I do. Nothing against Gambit. Uh, Cyclops. I always like Cyclops because no one likes Cyclops when I was a kid. Uh, I love Wolverine. It's one of my favorite superheroes. But like Cyclops just was, he wasn't treated right. Um, and uh, I, I've always liked Cyclops. Hey, Gary, I'm pretty much uh, left of center on my political views, but love what you and Drinker are doing. Ah, thanks, Will. Uh, Will 48 Bell for $49.99. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Sorry, somebody knocked at my door. They could have just come in. Thanks. I appreciate it. And you're welcome here. Uh, did I catch STD? No, I haven't caught an STD in my life. Uh, thankfully, very grateful for that. I probably should have, but I didn't. Um, oh, you mean the fucking show? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, STD flared up again tonight. I'm gonna watch it before FNT tomorrow. I am. Uh, we, I probably should have done a live review during this, huh? Uh, we can pick those up later. But, um, yeah, I don't think I have time to do the weekly live reviews, but I'll do a couple. Maybe we'll do one at, at halfway the season and then at season's end because I am going to see it out. I am going to see thing is I didn't watch last season at all. <laughs> so I need to, um, I caught a couple, I, I can't say that. I watched like a couple, half of a couple episodes. Uh, so I'm going to have to watch it to know what's going on. And no, I don't have to but I want to make sure I have all the information. Um, and then, uh, and then maybe we do a, a, a retrospective on star Trek discovery, the worst show ever made. Maybe that's a good video. We could even do like top 10, most retarded top 10. I don't know. How do we, it's, you can't say top 10 most retarded moments. Top 10. <laughs> Like, be retarded about it. Top 10 retard in STD. <laughs> we could do that. Something like that. Top 10 dumbest moments in STD. Some, something like that. Maybe. Maybe we do that. That sounds fun. Doesn't that sound fun? Because I can find 10 moments pretty easily. It, it would be breaking them down. There'd be a lot of honorable mentions. Lots of honorable mentions. Dishonorable mentions. Uh, I don't know. Would you like that chat? Would you watch that video? Top 10 same sex kisses, top 10 STDs. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, syphilis. <laughs> uh, probably you'll probably watch it. I mean, thank you for honesty. It's like, I mean, if I get around to it. <laughs> Uh, all right, we got to get through these because uh, I got to go. I got to go, man. Okay, let's do this. Uh, Brother Gary, the caliphate of super earth needs you uh, to help repel the terminated bug infidels. Play hell divers and join our glorious jihad. Uh, Allahu Iger, the talent terrorist. <laughs> Maybe. A la Iger. <laughs> uh, Magnum Norris for $20. Your face on Sydney Sweeney is hilarious. It is. Um, it is. And and 
would. Um, hey, Gary, where are you at with uh, OP? YF is halfway. I ain't fucking halfway. I ain't halfway. I'm going to get really caught up on my drive. Because uh, I don't drive the whole way. I, I can. We uh, we take turns, me and Mrs. Nerdrotic, so we can go further, farther, faster. Uh, Hail, turning 40. So here's 40 emu bucks. Fantastic, Mr. Knox. Thank you for the 40 Australian dollars. Love what you do. And that it, it gets my day going, especially FNT. Hail, what time is it over there on the other side of the world? What time is it over there? Uh, Carrier, a raccoon city story for 50. <laughs> hey, Nerdrotic. Messaged you during the show recently. Carrier is my animated graphic novel, a Resident Evil film noir detective story told as a Max Payne cutscene. Did a podcast with Drinker last year. Wanted to say hi and get some hype for my fourth episode. I will check out the email. Hell yeah, get the hype going. Is it, so, I mean, like, listen. I know I'm a massive gamer, right? But Raccoon City, isn't that the game with the Mila Jovovich movie? Right? Did I get it right? <laughs> I hope so. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Magnum Doors for 50. I must give David a damn props for creating a great show of all of time, but they definitely dropped the ball. Yes, they dropped the ball at the end. They dropped the ball at the end. Is it all their fault? No, but it is their fault. They can't, like, be, they're not blameless. George, Dan, and Dave all have the blame on that, baby. You know what they, the, you know what? They forgot about the fans. They forgot about the people who bought those books and watched that show. They both got all high in their own fucking farts and their side projects and off to greater things. And this is just going to be the stepping stone to a much bigger career. And they forgot to seal the deal because it's not how you start. It's how you fucking finish. I can't tell you. I cannot fucking t i lost count how many comic runs i read of either huge spanning crossovers or just mini series that started out great and ended like utter dog shit more often than not that's what happened uh the biggest problem with modernized shit is people always uh fail to know the difference between improving and making unnecessary changes to adapt for better or worse with gaming and filming, including comics. Yeah, you are correct, sir. Big difference. Updating for a modern audience is not improving it. A great example of something improved. Many Tolkien fans will disagree with me. They'll get mad with me, mad at me. Boromir's death was done better in the films. Better in the films. Joshua Henderson, thank you for the $9.99. Metalhead Madman, uh, Madman for $10. Heard Disney stock started to tank after the thing with Pelts. Uh, what is it as of now? It's still at $119. I wouldn't call it tank. I mean, they lost a lot of money with that $2. Uh, but that was the sell-off of people who were just hanging on to vote for Pelts and leaving. Um, I think the bigger takeaway is it didn't spike. It didn't go up. And it usually does during these events. So the fact that it went down at all is, and the fact that there was another proxy battle and there'll probably be another one is an indictment of Bob Iger's legacy. I, I never thought he'd, I never thought Pelts would get the seat ever. But I mean, I, I don't know anything about that world because I do not invest into companies. I do not have a 401k. I, the only stock I own, I forgot. It's because I forgot about it. Um, my, my dad, uh, God rest his soul did very well in the stock market. He knew his fucking shit. He was an accountant. So like he knew his shit. Uh, Apple fell really far from the tree on that one. <laughs> really far. And all I saw it was, is gambling, right? Gambling with my money. I'm like, eh. but another thing my dad taught me is 
diversification. He also bought property. I know. Okay. Because, like, I can touch a property and I can see a property and it's mine. It's not some thing that's out there that may or may not collecting may or may not be collecting interest with some guy controlling my money. I have property tangibles. That's what I like. Uh, Dan Vask payment idea, have him cover waiting for some day by Paul Westerberg, but make it waiting for nerdrotic. That's a good idea, but we got to stick with the original bet. Now I could maybe base the song on that song. I have to base it on something because I can't write music. So even when I played, when I play, it's like by ear or tablature. Mostly by ear. Uh, Trucker Mark for $5. Looking forward to seeing you and the team in Las Vegas. Can't wait to see you, Trucker Mark. Drive safe, brother. Uh, have you heard of Colin Bunn? Marvel writer, guess he's in my area and has meetups for writing groups. Just wasn't sure if he was worth the time. Uh, I, I have heard the name. I, I maybe I can't remember if it was negative or not though. Hasn't been a while. Yeah, well, go to go to your boy Zach <laughs> and see if there's any videos on him. Uh, but I mean, if he's if he's offering like writing meetups, that's 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 cool. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, Kendon Bronner for five dollars. That's a nice thing to do. Whatever his politics are, and he could have probably, for all I know, he probably would. Yeah, I, fucking, I, I just got to assume everybody who worked for Marvel and DC at some point tried to cancel fucking somebody because they're, they're all just foul, foul, inhuman fucking ghouls out there. Uh, rest in peace, Ed Piscor. And uh, no regrets on on having a massive relapse that forced me to sell my store and leave the comic industry as a retailer completely uh had every intention of returning but as time went on i'm like no nah, i'm good no thanks uh the place doesn't it doesn't say see comics are supposed to be fun it's supposed to be fun first and foremost it's supposed to be an enjoyable hobby It's not fun anymore. Not not that part of it. Uh, Nick Brony for nineteen ninety nine. The fellowship is real, and strangely enough, this channel and others are the voices of reason and sanity in this crazy timeline we're living in. Thanks, Gary, and hail to the fellowship. Hail to you. Hail to you. Uh, hail, Gary. Play Call of Duty CW. There's a CW version of Call, Call of Duty. And team and kill with me. Uh, someday I might. Do we get to kill? Like it's the CW. So do we kill? <laughs> I won't even say that. I won't even say what I was about to say. We're moving on. I, that joke was not going to be good anyway. Uh, if Leslie Headland was a man, he'd be in prison with Harvey as an accessory. Uh, rainbow privilege at its worst. Yes, yes, and it'd probably be uh, Harvey's prison bitch. Uh, obscure artist for five dollars. Did the Deadwood series move suffer from modern message agenda? Uh, the movie? No, it just wasn't that great. But I mean, it, no, it, it didn't. No. If Joe Rogan invited you on Joe Rogan, would you go? Yes. AJX Skyline for $1.99 in a heartbeat. What's up with reporting uh, that Shudy Gawa will be leaving Doctor Who and Matt Smith will be returning as the 16th Doctor? Uh, I think that was a April Fool's joke. Had to be. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if you hear that Shooty Got was leaving after two seasons because the show's canceled. Tracy. Got to watch out for that news around April 1st. That's why the female Silver Surfer thing, I literally, when I first saw it, even if it was deadline, I'm like, what's the date? What's the date? Oh, April 3rd. Okay. Uh, fun fact, next week, this Super Chat will take the form of a sugar-free Red Bulls. Hail! Hail. Yeah my drink of choice at meetups thank you wg can't wait to see you brother and he's gifted five nerdrotic live memberships look at him uh emi lou what, did i get that right is a new member cheers uh games for the win you can call me games been watching for a while and enjoy watching you and others i just wanted to ask 
who the hell is the organized chaos guy and why has he hate boner for you um i don't know i know he's got a horrible voice for youtube like i would use a voice changer or something and uh i i don't know maybe maybe i had sex with his mom back in the 80s maybe i'm his dad i don't fucking know oh that's the one <laughs> that's the one where tyrone is taking care of his kids according, according to eric july <laughs> awesome. tyrone is taking care of your kids <laughs> Now, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's, it's, hey, it's YouTube, freedom of speech. You can say what he wants. I've never met the guy. Uh, and maybe we'll run into each other someday and we can have a chat about it. But uh, Steve DeLeon became a YouTube member. Thank you, brother. Uh, Irene Kayes. Sorry if I screwed that up. How fat? How fat are they going to make the Silver Surf her to make it PC? Oh, three hundred pounds, easy. I think Horny Alf has a a meme of it already. I was gonna use it because the, the thumb was like all fucked up for this one. Sorry guys. And then I tried to find the Leslie Headland Modoc and I couldn't. So uh, maybe maybe I'll just put the <laughs> Black female silver surfer from Horny Alpha on later. I don't know. If anybody could find the female Modoc, tweet it at me. Gary, awesome that you're uh, on Piers Morgan with Drinker's suggestion. Put Iger as a Galactus in your thumbnail when you cover the FF story. Hey, oh, that's a good idea, Mark Tan. That's a good idea. Uh, Gary, what are your thoughts on X Men 97 episodes so far? So far, it's okay. I don't fucking hate it. I like Cyclops. Um, love Triangle, little weird little weird little weird but it has been i mean th it doesn't look like they're adapting any modern books so as far as it listen marvel canon died the day disney took over marvel okay so marvel canon in the comic books died the day disney took over marvel that's 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 my head canon it's just fucking especially with like the day axel alonzo came in fucking shit it's all shit casada was on his way out he had, dude casada had good ideas and he has some fucking horrific ideas and his attitude towards fans especially in uh especially uh oh like three years ago when he was uh wishing remphemus a fucking happy birthday fuck that dude fuck that dude but um yeah so i would say back to x-men 97 Because the love triangle thing is there's plausible deniability with it. Like it might be something else. Not sure. Um, but they, they're they putting a lot of stuff from the comics, like little tidbits in there. And I like how they're doing Cyclops. So I don't hate it, but I fully expect it to get shitty. But we're halfway through and I don't hate it. <laughs> I... I'm not sitting here telling you to go get Disney Plus. I would not do that. I would Tortuga that shit if you want to see it. Uh, it is not, It. I repeat, it is not worth, even if you're not like completely anti-Disney out there, it is not worth getting a subscription to fucking whatever it is, D Plus or Hulu. Absolutely not. It's not that good. It's just not terrible. Gary, uh, oh, I read that one already. Uh, we actually... Well, actually, Snake Eyes is Chinese. Thank you, Steve Delore. <laughs> That's smart ass. Uh, been watching, um, been watching FNT since the coof, and last week's was the funniest one to date. Thank you. That is high praise. I laughed so hard I almost wet my pants. I can't believe they took it down. Bunch of figs. Yep. Yep. Thanks, John McKinley. Thank you for the nine ninety nine. Emily Kruger says, "Happy Thursday, Happy Thursday to you, Emily. Hope you're doing well out there." Thank you, Emily. Thought the same was Silver. Uh, I thought the same was Silver Surfette. My bad. No, there's Silver Surfette. I think Tom did that one. I did Silver Surf her. 
he did Silver Surfette, and then somebody did Silver Suffragette. All three of them, roll with it, baby. It's all part of the MCU, which belongs to you, by the way. It all belongs to you. Uh, Tolkien Brown for $10. Do you think Mike Flanagan uh, is going to fuck up Dark Tower more than it already was in the movie adaptation? Or is there a chance? Andrew P. for 10 Canadian pesos. Well, if you ask Mahler, who's a fan of Flanagan, he would say it has a chance. Me? <sighs> Personally, I think Mike Flanagan has gone just downhill <laughs> since since uh, the House on Haunted Hill, whatever the, the first one on uh, Netflix, which I liked a lot, um, despite the wonky, wonky ending. I think he's gone downhill. Uh, Fall of the House of Usher was, I think, kind of a return to form. Uh, it was good. The gunslinger, though, is not like creepy, uh, eerie, slow burning uh, story between family members screwing each other over. Um, it's uh, or friends screwing each other over. It's it's old west fantasy done by Stephen King. Uh, some of his better King's a fucking moron, but I really I would say the the books that have stood the test of time with me is the Dark Tower series, for sure. Uh, really love the Marvel adaptations. Um, Jay Lee did the covers for a bunch of those. Really fucking love that stuff. It was good, good, good. Good, good, good. I hope so, man. I want it to be good. I want it to be good. That would be fun if they did a good version of that. We'd all be happy. Uh, AJ Borkar. I hope I didn't say that wrong. What's up, AJ? Thank you. Thank you for the $10. Uh, what is your take on Ashton? Uh, Anna, that Star Wars. Uh, what is your take on Ashton? I know Ashton. I got no pro. Uh, she's pretty cool. I've met her three or four times. Uh, that Star Wars girl. I've done panels with her. Cecil, I like Cecil. Camelot and several comics gators being banned from C two E two. Are all of them? Did Cecil get banned? Did did Anna get banned? Why? Night Pride. Why? Hang on. Oh, it doesn't look like people are liking Monkey Man. Hang on. I'm looking into this. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, they canceled Anna's press pass for C2E2? Why? Uh, that's fucked up. Yeah, I don't think anybody should be banned from a Comic-Con. I think if anybody wants to go, they should go. I mean, look at all the fucking grooming fruits that they allow in already. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? So I don't know what's behind it, but uh, it's fucked up. They should be allowed to go to a con. Uh, uh, Cecil was going to come to our meetup. Uh, he had he can't he could told me last night he couldn't make it, but um, yeah, Cecil was going to come to our meetup. Uh, Ashton got canceled. The cosplayer? Why? Yeah, I I don't get that. I don't get that. Uh, especially when Anna, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if Anna's out there. She went to San Diego on a press pass. I went to San Diego on a press pass. I'm sure she would get a New York Comic Con press pass like I got a New York Comic Con press pass. Now, I let mine lapse because I'm never going to fucking New York ever again. New York City. I wouldn't set foot in that fucking shithole. And I have no desire. I, the, con, the con wasn't that great. Um that was a funny con, by the way. I was back in 2019 because that's when like Cecil went up on Mark Wade. That was pretty fucking funny. Um, but uh, and that's when uh, me and Jeremy uh, and uh, Saruin of Roundhouse, 
why did I say his name of Roundhouse? Sir Ruin of Roundhead. Uh, what took we went to go see Joker at the Alamo Draft House. I had to walk through a fucking metal detector because of all the incel bullshit. It was so crazy. And it was right before COVID. I remember that's like that's the place where like, man, this there's this COVID thing going on. Little did we know, or a lot did we know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and I mentioned it. I think it was on the real BBC or on the nooner. Um, I lost my press pass to San Diego. Now I'm not making an issue of it because I need to find out if it's like something I filled out wrong. Like, uh, and, and I can verify that like, because I know somebody, <laughs> so I can verify if that's exactly what happened. So I'm, I, and even if they did, I don't know if I'd make an issue of it. I don't know if I'd give a fuck. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't, as as of now, I had a press pass to WonderCon and Comic-Con, which were the same ones, and I don't anymore. So I don't, I don't know if there's, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. But they should be allowed to go. First Fantastic Four film should be 15-minute origin film plus more Mole Man uh conflicts yeah just m make it fantastic four number one that's all you do uh what was captain america origin essentially his origin what was like dude if you want to modernize anything i would say don't don't do all of it i love mark millar i love mark millar but maybe frame it with ultimate Fantastic Four number one, because quite frankly, the MCU is more ultimate universe than 616. If that's the route you want to go, but they're not going to do that. Uh, I love scotch for $2. I love scotch, scotchity scotch, scotch. Thank you, Gary, for keeping me entertained while I'm at work. Also, thank you for talking about uh, recovery it helps a lot cheers very smooth for 4.99 stay sober stay sober i saw steve-o uh talking about how bill maher wouldn't quit smoking pot for him to go on an interview because steve-o asked him to not smoke pot uh respect to steve-o for being being sober for 16 16 years but um bro i i i like steve-o more than i like bill maher uh, fuck Bill Maher, but it's not Bill Maher's responsibility to to change his life for a sober person. This is what a lot of people need to learn, right? This is that, um, this is the shit we fight every fucking day. Is you need to respect my pronouns. You need to do this. You need to respect my identity. I don't need to do fucking shit. And guess what? You don't need to do shit for me. You don't need to not drink around me because I'm a uh, recovering alcoholic. You don't need to close your bar. If I'm walking by, you don't need to put out your fucking joint. I've had pot smoke blown in my fucking face. You know what? That's just the way it is. Can't expect the world to change for you. This is, that's a, that's a fucking really hard conversation I had with my kid who's on the spectrum. I said, you know what? Life ain't fair and it sucks and the world's not going to change for you. So it's up to you to adapt. Never said any of this was fair. It's not fair that I was born with fucked up brain chemistry or whatever it is. And uh, I have an addicted personality and I can't have a fucking beer with my friends fucked up, but Oh, well got to move on. Not going to sit there and whine about how fucked up it is. Uh, it's, it's an objective truth in my life and I either deal with it or I'll never move on. So, uh, yeah, Bill Maher has every right to say, no, I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to stop smoking pot on my podcast. He has every right to say that. And as a sober person, we need to, we need to understand that. We need to like either don't put yourself in that position because it's your sobriety. My sobriety is in my control. It's in my control. So don't put yourself in a position where you're uncomfortable um, at all. But don't expect people to, to change, right? Don't expect people to change. And then if he says no, don't go out and fucking bitch it. Like, yeah. If I was the sponsor, I'd be, dude, dude. Let's meet for coffee. 
Hopefully to read a little bit about Dr. Bob. But I'm glad he's sober for 16 years and he looks really super healthy. And that's great. Uh, Kayla, for $10, you know what saves Hollywood, the re-release, uh, all the catalog cinema for the next hundred years and all over and stop making movies, period. Reset the whole thing. Start uh, the silent era again. Hey, hey, they they said the quiet part out loud in the last video I did. They, they're talking about a Hollywood reboot. Uh, but we know how they'll do it. Uh, maybe George Lucas knew uh, what was what happened and did it for a number of reasons, partly because it would create a new generation of rogue filmmakers or our uplink. I think that's more 40 chest than George gives a shit about. He's in his eighties. And I think he was just trying to set his family for life. And I don't think he's in for any fight right now. I don't think he cares. Lord Baratheon, the true, you should be King Baratheon. But which Baratheon are you? Wait, I can't, it's in there, but I can't see it. Cause my eyes are so fucking bad. Uh, it's now rumored that Franklin Richards and uh, Valeria are in the Fantastic Four movie. Thoughts? Fucking terrible. No kids. No Herbie the robot. No fucking Silver Surfer. No Galactus. Those come later. You maybe introduce a Victor Von Doom, but you don't even make him Dr. Doom right away. You establish the Fantastic Four. Keep it simple. These guys, but they can't do that. Even if they kept it simple, it would still suck. And they're just making it more complicated. And they're, they suck. They're not, these are not talented people. The, the studio that has pushed out five years of absolute shit does not deserve any benefit of the doubt. And it's fucking United Nations Fantastic Four. Are you bringing back Monday Nooner sometimes, Tiger King, for uh, a month? It's interesting that you bring that up. Maybe. Maybe. How do you feel about the MCU turning Silver, uh, Silver Surfer into a woman? At this point, they're just using the multiverse as a lazy excuse for bastardizing OG characters. Joshua Henderson, I completely agree with your statement. They're using the multiverse. Uh, and they're also using uh, obscure comic canon to justify what they were going to do anyway. Race and gender swap for the message. And then they're trying to hide behind obscure comic book canon. And then that's where, you know, uh, e Elon was purging bots, but like I kept on getting the same thing from the same fucking anima anime avatar with a, a dumber name, but they're all clearly it's an established character it's like bro oh, i'm sorry i should be talking in ones and zeros to you because you're a fucking bot uh yeah le chevalier de luis for five canadian pesos i've been following you since std lawsuit how did it end amazing fnt last friday where can i watch again yeah anas abdin abdin was completely spent out of existence and he and and it ended where like he needed more money and he just couldn't get it. Right. He just couldn't get it. So, um, God, a brief story. There's videos on it. Anas Abdin is a, uh, a man who lives in Kuwait and an Iranian man who lives in, is it, I'm sorry, Egyptian or Iranian. Sorry. Anas. Uh, he's in Kuwait. He is a digital artist, really fucking talented, really super talented digital artist. And the tardigrade and a lot of the concepts from STD were, in my opinion, completely lifted from his fucking video game, right down to the gay doctors, uh, the the biracial, not the interracial, sorry, not biracial, interracial gay doctors. Um, I've got videos on it from years ago, uh, but yeah, he was spent out of existence. And then Kurtzman went on to rip off Mass Effect. Uh, they put stock images like stock images and you and i could buy in um picard season two i've i've chronicled all this all this that kurtzman's the biggest fucking fraud out there but yeah it didn't end well and uh the little guy lost and goliath uh won and it sucks but that's life 
Amazing FNT last Friday. Where can I watch it again? You can watch it on X. It's on my pinned uh, account at Nerdrotics. You can watch it on Rumble on Nerdrotic. Uh, and I believe you can now watch it on Nerdrotic.com. You can also listen to it on Spotify, Audible, Apple Music, and everywhere you can get a podcast. Give us a five-star review. Uh, Tales of the Empire might be okay on Disney Animated. Yeah, they're all like four minutes long, Aurora Uplinks. I mean, it's hard to fuck up, but we'll see. <laughs> Uh, can't wait for uh, Final for, uh, Forbidden Frontier. Love it. Hail Mahler and Perry. Hail. Hail. Yeah, we'll be back in a, in a week. We'll be back in a week. <clears throat> uh, FNT tomorrow, then uh, any streaming I do will be very random during the week. Uh, no, I won't be on Real BBC and there'll be no Nooner because I'm going because I'm going to Vegas. I've uh, been binging through New Who for the first time, and I'm beginning of season four. So, was just wondering who's your favorite New Who doctor? Well, uh, after Tenet kind of hurt his legacy coming back to those uh, specials, gotta say Matt Smith. <laughs> gotta say Matt Smith. He was close anyway. Aurora Uplinks. I actually wrote a half hour intro episode for a TIE fighter pilot based show. That'd be cool. It follows a Star Destroyer uh, rescuing a task force. Trapped in a minefield. See, that would be fun. You see, you guys are already better. Uh, parents are amazing. Praying for mine often. They are. They are. I wish uh, my dad was still around. Aurora Uplinks. Thank you. Uh, hey, Gary. Just wanted to point out that I noticed a soup I sent wasn't red. Uh, no big deal. When? Tonight? Uh, was just uh, a Sydney Sweeney joke. Nerd of the Veil. Vale. I'll, I'll scroll back up and read it. Uh, was hoping to catch it on a square. Oh, uh, so, okay. I'll find it. Hang on. No worries. We haven't got back. To, I still got some more to read, but you guys have been crazy tonight. Uh, was hoping uh, to catch it in the square. I didn't see it either. I had sent it uh, to the only one uh, was read on F. Only one was read on FNT. So where was the other one? Just put it in chat. But hang on, hang on, buddy, hang on. Hang on. I can fix that. Oh, shit. Uh, da, 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 I don't see it, Ned. Why did it not get caught? Um, I'll have X-ray girl look for it. Okay, bud. And we can read it tomorrow. We can read it tomorrow, buddy. Uh, was hoping you catch it in the script. Didn't see it either. I had sent it two days. Only one was right on FNT. Okay, well, we'll. I'll have. I'll have X-ray go find the other one. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Also, chat. Where did we leave off? Where did we leave off? Do you remember? I'll give you a moment while I sip some water. Lance th uh, Thrust Thirstcock. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> That's where we left off. Lance Thrustcock for $9.99. Gary, you're only gay if you're on the bottom. If you're on the top, you're just getting ass. <laughs> MJ Skyver. MJ Skyver. Oh, no. MJ O. Skyver uh, for $2. Gary, remember, get poke, go broke. That's right. It's a Gundam is a top tier guest. Uh, yes, he is, Terry. Absolutely. In uh, absolute top tier guest. Uh, the Raging D had for $2. Quarter didn't want to do that. He never does. Thumb Ugly for $5. Bridge 2.0 is running ESG. They're ingraining it now, not advertising. Rich people playing God. Gundam knows all about this kind of stuff. Kirsch 2. Yes, they do. Ripperverse is sub-Marvel trash. Nobody here has the balls to say it because your boy is rich. 
Uh, this is from uh, John Blunt, 1313 for $10. And now every angry rant FNT members throw at other zero talent artists is just insufferable. Hail Rip. I don't know, but you have the right to your opinion. You have right to your opinion to a uh, independent book that's just starting out. <laughs> okay. Um, Andrew Nielsen for $10 says, hey, it's Gundam. You should recommend. Oh, I can't read this. Fry Fryron Beyond Journeys and to Neurotic. But maybe because he knows I can't read it. <laughs> Grayski for $1.99. It's not harassment Gundam. It's you're a super fan. That's right. I'm legendary for $20. Big shout out. And thanks to Shad. I found you through the angry Joe beef and followed you since let this be my first hail to the fellowship. Hail. I enjoy watching you all uh, guys and girls and whatever Gundam is and wherever Gundam is. Haha. -ha, keep it up. Uh, Captain Dilly Gaff. I got to be careful with these names. For $10, I have a version of Castlevania NES called Holy Diver. Holy Diver. Hell yeah. Uh, instead of Simon Belmont, you play a Ronnie James as Ronnie James Dio. Hail! <laughs> R.I.P. Dio. And I have a version. No, I read that one. I'm celebrating. I've just passed my dissertation defense this morning. I'm a PhD now uh, in climatology. And you watch us. <laughs> Joe's from 81 for $20. Congratulations. <laughs> now you guys are smart, way smarter than us. Uh, Dark 8182 for five. Papa Gundam, please enlighten this FNT group just how much this masterpiece. Frerin, beyond Frerin, I can say now, beyond Journey's End is especially uh, those that like Lord of the Rings. I'll ask him, okay? Uh, Jeremy David for $2. Taylor Loren's porn category is mature. 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 Rob for $5. I spelled knighted wrong earlier and Ryan called me out. I had to make it right. Oh, fuck Ryan. He's fucking grammar Nazi. I'm sorry, just Nazi. Uh, I cracked myself up. Jay's Asian son for $1.99. Mom, why won't you answer dad's texts? Because she no love him long time. That's why. Hans, not Gruber, for 119 Norwegian krona. What bad movie release gave you guys your biggest rise of subscribers and views? Slash views. Um, okay, for Jeremy, the big boost was... I'm going to say two things for Jeremy. Uh, obviously, Last Jedi, Last of Us 2. Um, as, as did like World of Warcraft. So he got a bunch of stuff before that. Uh, Doctor Who boosted him. Star Trek Batgirl. I say Batgirl? He's kind of known for Batgirl. Uh, Ryan? Ryan just makes 8,000 videos a month. But he got a pretty good boost for Last of Us 2. I mean, everybody got boosted with, with The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. Um, for me? I don't know. Because there's been uh, a few. Well, let's say Stratosphere. As far as subs, not views. Subs is Rings of Power. Rings of power. And then a bet with Dan Vask <laughs> and Hollywood going on strike. Hollywood going on strike was, was crazy for me. Absolutely crazy. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, you know what? I, I want to save that one for the group. I think that's, I think I'm speaking for everybody and I shouldn't, but, uh, if we're going to say one movie that put us through the stratosphere, uh, the Marvels. The Marvels was nuts. And I, the one I didn't expect was Indiana Jones. I thought I'd review it and I thought it'd be shit. I didn't think it would be as shit as it was, especially with James Mangold directing. I'm like, 
I'm going to hate Phoebe Waller bridge, but some of the indie stuff might be cool. That's what I thought. Holy fuck. Was that bad? Holy shit. Was it bad? Holy shit. It actually, I had it beat out Marvel's in uh, the top five, right? I did. Because I was like weighing them out and I talked to a few people and I went through comments and I'm like, there's way more hate for Indi this Indiana Jones film. There's like people were more mad about that. So it wins. Like Marvel's was, ha ha, like this fucking retard. Um, like Indiana Jones was like, God damn. Like, it's impressive how much they fucking suck, and it's it's weird that I'm still angry, you know? I saw as X-Ray Girl and QB playing, too. Yes. Yes, they do play the, the, the Hell Divers. You rang, says Jay's half-Asian son for $2. I bought a pair of headphones. That's good. I'm glad. Uh, I still stream with people who don't wear headphones. Wear fucking headphones and get a good mic. Uh, my son was just born happy and healthy at, at his first toy comic and kids book are uh, all Spider-Man. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. Hail to the fellowship and happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Hope you all had a good Easter. Super based for $10. Uh, Grayski for $1.99. White Conda forever. White Boy Gamers rule. one nine nine. White Boy Gamers summer. That's what this is going to be. Master Bater for $2. Garrett can only see three quarters of himself in games. This is true. Did Gundam have too many of his vitamins? Yes, he did. Minor Zircon for $2. Josh Kelsey drops $19.99, just walks away. That's what he does. Does the mean Lord do baptisms? Because I'm also like a, like my precious one to be a born again bigot. Born again bigot. Uh, yes, the meme Lord does do baptisms. As I can't see, uh, I can't see the super chat or re, re I can't seem seem to super chat you or remember you. Not remember like I forgot you. It's remember. There's probably a sexual joke in there somewhere. Is there something going on with your channel? Check your what browser you're on and your credit card, because sometimes the YouTube's doesn't like other browsers, especially if it's an Apple product. Uh, the Raging D-Head for $2. Gundam on FNT. The quality just went up. It always does when he's there. Cole Hauser for $5. I have a great plot for the Society of Magical Negroes too. Say Black Girl Magic 3. Sometimes click your heels and you end up in Wakanda. Ryan is my producer. I, I love the idea. That's beautiful. Uh, Sinister Mustache for $20. When I was introduced to Gundam, he had Richard Simmons as his avatar. I know. That was so good. Uh, that is who I picture every time he speaks. Gary, I have a video to send you. What is the best place? Hail FIT, Hail the Fellowship, Hail Gundam. Uh, Gary at nerdrotic.com. Please send it there. My my wife uh, monitors the email and uh, she's great at it. Alan Hanley for $2. Uh, Kamal Nanjani Pakistani is, Pakajan, is Pakistani. Thank you. Uh, Jay's half Asian son for $2. Has anyone seen my dad? No, he doesn't love you anymore. Fuck off. Uh, Steven DeLeon for two dollars. Bam, 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 bang, gone. Eat it. Okay. Uh, Vataz for ten dollars. Hail FNT. It's a Gundam on FNT. Hells yeah, yeah. He fucking rolls. I love him so much. It, he was gone for too long. It had been like almost a year. And uh, I was hoping. I'm like, God, I don't think he's. I hope he doesn't think I'm mad at him. Uh, I just uh, we both got busy. Because I could never be mad at my my Gundam. Okay, we got uh, memberships here. Five neurotic memberships from WG. Lance Finn, 85. Five neurotic memberships. As is Wonky Eyebrow. Five neurotic memberships. Happy Plague Doctor. Five neurotic memberships. And Misa Son. For five neurotic memberships. That's all $25 each. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That wraps it up for FNT. Let's get through the rest of the new stuff now. Rest of the new stuff now. Where was I? Oh, shit. I don't know where I left off for this one. There's Jay's abandoned secret Asian wife. Uh, okay. 
Pre-Don Corp says, hey, Gary, what did you think of John Carpenter's thing? Uh, okay, uh, greatest horror movie ever made. That's what I think of it. That's what I think of it. Forgot my camera was off. Sorry. Uh, Jay's abandoned secret Asian for $2. Jay went out for butter and never came back. No, he didn't. Uh, Jay was like the cat that he let out to die. He just let out. I uh, grew up with uh, Roberto's carne, Roberto's carne asada burrito. Live in Vegas now. Couldn't get into the sit down next week. Uh, what up? And uh, couldn't get into the sit down next week. What up? How can I still get in? Alex and employees are awesome. Uh, Joel Watkins for twenty dollars. Email Mrs. Nerdrotic at Gary at Nerdrotic .com and say waiting list and give her your name and uh, details and stuff. Because uh, like we do the waiting list because people cancel last minute all the time for a, a variety of very good reasons. Uh, but um, yeah, so yeah, do that. Uh, do that right now, though. Do that right now. I think Mrs. Nerdrotic is. I think she's back. She's back now. She was out volunteering at a film festival thing. John Gibson for ten dollars with. Fall guy coming out. It made me remember the Heather Thomas pink bikini poster. Who could ever forget that? That got a generation through puberty. That Fair Fawcett, Christy Brinkley, the one where she's like wearing the 80s blue. I had that poster in my room. Uh, there sure was a lot less gender confusion then. For sure, dude. For sure. For sure. Aurora Uplinks, tell Jeremy about the G.I. Joe figures pre order, please. I will. What's he need to know? Could you imagine if STD did a packlet episode? I, I, I can imagine this. Uh, have you watched Star Trek Discovery? Oh, you might have Aurora. Oh, Aurora, it's done. It's done an episode ripping off every genre possible, and then we're gonna get. Uh, I can't wait for Hogwarts fucking Star Trek with the uh, with the Academy. Top ten flare ups in STD. Take her sex ten. That is fucking good. That is fucking good. That is good. My brother loved Star Trek Voyager growing up, but I ne uh, but I never hear you talk about that series. Was it not that good a sh show? Uh, Seven of Nine's Tits. Oh, uh, Star Trek Voyager. Um, great concept sc uh, squandered. Great concept squandered. I don't hate it, though. I'd watch Voyager a thousand times before any modern Trek outside of Picard season three. But um, Voyager, I'd still like it better than the first couple of seasons of Enterprise for sure. Uh, but I tell you what, like like most people, I was not about DS9 when it came out. I'm like, fuck this. There's no ship. What's the fuck's going on here? It's dirty. This isn't Star Trek. And then I started loving it. Because, and, and and that's because there wasn't, I mean, there was still, there was tons of cable and stuff, but uh, there wasn't that much variety. So it'd be like, fine, I'll just throw on Star Trek. And then, so it forced me to, to kind of get through it. And then I even appreciate the earlier stuff now, though, a lot more. Things could always get worse. But no, I don't hate Voyager. It's just not top tier for me. It's not, but it's, it's real Star Trek and it's Shakespeare compared to the shit we're getting today. I uh, love the work of Williams, Goldsmith, Horner, and Zimmer at all. Uh, even enjoyed Hullock and Wall. Yes. Mass Effect composers. Best, ev uh, best ever though was the greatest guitarist, Eddie Van Halen and drummer Pert in concert. Uh, I've seen them both. I've seen them both. Uh, John Williams greatest film composer of all time but jerry goldsmith is a 1a is a 1a and horner is up the, in the conversation too hans zimmer yes i will say yes a lot of re very repetitive but man his stuff is can fucking the battle and the gladiator holy shit so good uh hey gary i watched the hunt the gentleman bunch, uh, the gentleman.
bunch of other any top five recommendations. Don't list any 90s or lower years. I saw them all. LOL. When is a Michigan meetup? I just watched The Hunt, The Gentleman, bunch of others. So do you have any more modern recommendations that aren't the 90s that are TV shows? Well, watch Shogun. Coop for $10. <sighs> I'm sure you've watched One Piece already. House of the Dragon. Uh, Reacher Season 2 is, eh, is okay. It's all right. Uh, Tulsa King. Tulsa King's fucking 10 out of 10. I fucking love Tulsa King. I adore Tulsa King. Any chance you may have Esther from Piers Morgan on She Was Amazing? Uh, Cody Warner, I will do my best. Yes. I will do my best. Andrew Reader for 10 Canadian pesos. Uh, make Dan do that 12 minute meatloaf song that has uh, that could. Oh, see, I can base it on a 12 minute song. That That's an idea. Pirate Queen for $9.99. Gary STD used two starships like a barrier to stop an avalanche. I kid you not. Two starships shifted downwards to deflect the. What? <laughs> ah, you got to love STD. See, Michelle Paradise is one of the worst female writers in the history of writing and one of the worst modern writers in, in Hollywood right now. She's fucking terrible. Uh, B-Day is sat. You may enjoy my marathon. Great on Pierce. Thank you. No sound bites allowed. Your B-Day is Saturday. I may enjoy your marathon. Oh, thank you. What marathon? What marathon? Uh, would you recommend the meetups for people who struggle being uh, new to communities? This is my community of nerddom, but it feels weird rolling up solo with a bunch of strangers who know each other. Uh, Roger Sam for $10. That's pretty much what it is, though. So uh, you know each other from the chat. So, Roger, now people see you in the chat, and you'll go up at the meetup, and you go, hey, I'm Roger Sam. I'm, you know... I watch, I watch the live streams, dude, it won't be hard. It's uh, a bunch of socially awkward people with uh, content creators who were or are socially awkward people. <laughs> I managed them. Well, I ran a comic shop for 10 years. I'm all about talking to the socially awkward people. We got this. You just, you show up. You won't feel weird because we're all fucking weird. We're all weird. And you are more than welcome. Would love to see you. But a bunch of people in the chat would love to see you. Buy you a drink. Have fun. Just hang out, you know. Bask in the nerddom. Uh, Tennessee Sacrifice for $10. First time Super Chat. Wanted to say best FNT ever. I laugh so hard. Love your entertainment. Cheers. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get to that. I, like, listen, you got to have a best one. <laughs> got to have a best one. And it's not on fucking YouTube. It's, oh, well. Oh, well. Thank you, though, Tennessee. Sacrifice. Appreciate you. I'm glad you guys had a laugh. We need them. Uh, Gregory Flack has been a member for three months. Hail! Hail to you, brother! Uh, GC for $5. How do companies like Disney keep funding projects that have already proven to be failures? It's like they're stuck in a cycle of self-sabotage. Um, they, they don't see it as failing. They see it as trailblazing. Uh, but the, what they're, what they're blazing is all of their IPs. They're blaze. They're putting it. It's a blaze. It is on fire. But they actually think they're doing like the, well, their version of the Lord's work, which is the woke Lord's work. Satan. <laughs> Basically. They're doing the Satan's work, you know, and they think it's good work. Speaking of WonderCon, Jay said it wasn't good. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, Chris said it was dead. It was absolutely fucking dead. Absolutely dead. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a smart con. For one, it's only a few months away from San Diego, and it's the same organization that puts it on. It's only 90 miles north, plus you're competing with Disneyland, plus you're in Anaheim, plus there's shitty parking, plus there's nothing there, right? And plus the Anaheim Convention Center is just kind of meh anyway. And plus it's in fucking California. 
So yeah, it, it's there's so many things going against it. Uh, it was better in San Francisco and Oakland. I'm 60. I hear multiverse. I check out immediately. Thanks for what you do. Rick Johnston for 499. That's a slee stack right there. So we're around the same age. We watched the dude land of the lost man. Kid show. Good lore. Good fucking lore. Somebody needs to take a serious take on land of the lost. Hey, Gary Hale, what do you think? Uh, who do you think is a better artist? Jim Lee or Mark Silvestri? Mark Silvestri. Answer that one quickly. Both are inspirations when I was drawing. Wish more conversation during the image days. Let's get to 2 million subs. Cosmic Burrito for 250 uh, Martian pay shows. Uh, no, like Jim Lee's a good artist. Okay, I'm not going to say he's shit. Uh, I, Silvestri in his prime? More fluid. I know way more. Jim's way more fucking popular. Jim's a popular guy. Popular guy. One of these days, I'll, while I'm live streaming, I'll remember the, to show you my Batman. So there's a Metacon 1 6 scale Batman hush that they made. They did a Superman, they did a Batman, they did a Harlequin, and they did it to Jim Lee specs. And you see, like, how disproportionate his art is like, absolutely disproportionate. Silvestri, more proportionate. That's kind of the problem. I had with uh, Lifefield. Lifefield seems like a good guy. He got a lot of shit for his art because his art wasn't that great. <laughs> it just fucking wasn't. But he was a good creative mind. I think he was really good for the industry and it doesn't seem like a bad guy. So I got nothing against him. But his art was never my thing. Um, but uh, I like Silvestri arts. Silvestri's art better. I do. That's just personal preference. So I know there's a tons of Jim Lee fans out there. I remember during COVID, Jim Lee is the president of DC. Thought it was a great idea to make a sketchbook instead of maybe, I don't know, reaching over the aisle to Marvel. And I hate to agree with Gail Simone on anything, but they should have done a fucking crossover. They should have done something to energize fans to get into those fucking shops and there'd be more shops. But they didn't. You know what they did? They canceled each other. They whined. They wrote statements that they promised they won't fucking rape each other. And, uh, as an eye on the same day, I quit a habit. I a habit, a habit and a hobby. I never thought I'd fucking quit like ever, which is collecting new comics, which is having a subscriber at a shop and getting my funny books every fucking Wednesday, every fucking Wednesday. I did that for years. As long as there was a direct market, I was in a comic shop once a week for decades, mostly more. And that's like outside of being in the one I, I owned. I was the kind of customer every shop would love. I'd walk in and go, okay, here are my monthlies. Everything X-Men, everything Batman, everything Spider-Man, anything that Ghost Rider appears in, anything that Deathlock, I just had this fucking list. Anything a Silver Surfer, I, it, Wolverine, I had a fucking massive pull list. Um and quit overnight just had enough i'm like i don't want to give any of these people money i fucking hate them all they've made me hate the industry i actually worked in you know as a retailer i wasn't a creator in it but i was a retailer and uh and none of it's fun anymore so fuck them <clears throat> they don't get my money and i just went to back issues ever since ever since haven't looked back don't miss it uh, and I had every intention, like when I started this channel, it was supposed to be part of a new shop. Every intention. I still might open one someday, but I won't sell fucking new comics. Fuck no. Hell no. Toys, vintage toys, back issues, vintage games. Maybe a little movie theater in back. What do you think? That'd be kind of cool. Uh, the great thing about global warming is you don't need a PhD to do it. Plus side marketing, it's uh, uh, side marketing it through animation training, but still figuring it out though. Says Aurora up links for five dollars. Hell, hell, crit nature for twenty. Uh, is that Chilean pesos or something else? Hey Gary, did you see Randall Carlson on Sean Ryan show? I haven't. It's in my playlist. I'm watching it tonight uh, as I go to bed. He said he has uh, some things to say about the current day bullshit. That's going on that will make another uh and will make another 
channel podcast. Oh, I'm looking forward to him ranting already. Yeah, I'm going to see him at Cosmic Summit. Uh, I'm going to see him in Cosmic Summit at uh, in uh, June. It's June. It's June. We're going to try to get him on the show this time. I'd love to. What's up, baby? You back? You look nice. You're welcome. My wife's back. Uh, I think you skipped my last super chat about FF movie. Big Boss. Uh, you didn't have to do that. I'm sorry. I would have gone back up. I'll do it. Hang on. Give me just a moment, buddy. Sorry about that. Uh, Big Boss SB. It must be way up there. Hang on. Un momento. Not seeing it, not seeing it, not seeing it. There it is. Okay. Gotcha. I think uh, they should do an FF movie that went full on exploration piece. Make large scenic areas. Uh, hell shoot in it 3D for fun. I mean, if you want to have them exploring the negative zone, I I'm fine with that. Just have them have it be the FF. You know, you, you can open the door for things like Annihilus. You know, um, but yeah, big, yeah, I, I'm fine with that. Like, make it a giant love letter to Kirby. What the Eternal should have been, what fucking Ant Man should have been. Like, just a big love letter to fucking Kirby. The closest thing we got, quite frankly, is the Celestials, uh, in in Guardians of the Galaxy, in that one little scene in the beginning. Well, at the Collectors, um, at nowhere, at nowhere. Like, that was some fucking Kirby love right there. Uh, but that's about it. Give me just a moment. Okay, Matthew Hammond. I got Major League on 4K. Oh, it's on, oh, it's on 4K. 4K. I got to get it. Uh, we do not know how great we had it in the chief wahoo until he was replaced with a c on the hat that uh and then replaced yeah uh, sports aren't fun anymore sports aren't fun anymore they need to bring there's a big push to bring the redskins back uh i think they should but i think the nfl is too cowardly uh matthew hammond fucking great movie it's one of my favorite sports movies it's in the top two or three major league is so fucking good Gary, did you uh, read my Star Blazers super chat from the Nooner a few weeks ago? It's about the uh, SB remake from 2012. You need to watch it. I have, uh, I did not read it. I did not read that. Uh, I have that. I have it. I have it. And I've watched it. Do you know the, the live action movies I, was for free on YouTube? It's got subtitles. It's not great, but it's there. Fucking Star Blazers was. That was the first cartoon I'd ever seen that had a story arc. It blew my fucking mind. I'm like, wait a minute. These episodes are connected. This is a continuing story. What the fuck's going on? That blew my seven-year-old mind. Plus the ship. Yamato. Fucking awesome ship. Now that you've been in Texas for a bit, uh, just a little over two years, uh, find a new carne uh, asada place. San Antonio has a shitload of fantastic uh, Mexican food places. The, actually, the Mexican food, like the sit-down Mexican food, is great. I got no complaints. It's it's just like the sit-down Mexican food in California. It's your... You don't have taco shops like we do. You just don't. So somebody was talking about Roberto's. There's, there is... Um, you can get a Southern California carne asada burrito in Las Vegas now in, in multiple locations. Uh, you can also get them in Arizona. Arizona has a shit ton now of the Southern California taco shops that are great. So you can get a proper SoCal carne asada burrito in Arizona, Nevada. I know that for a fact because I've gotten them there. Um, I, I don't know if they want you to know the location, but uh, near a place where I podcast last year, I had a really fucking good burrito. It's it, I can't wait to go back to podcast there so I can have that burrito. <laughs> The burrito was quite good. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Um, I haven't found like my go-to place though yet. Not yet. But I mean, I've only recently started like figuring out where I live and which direction is west. And I mean, I know it's where the sun sets, but like knowing it without a sun, you know what I mean? It takes when I was in San Francisco, it took me six years to figure out where the fuck I was going. And then by the time I left, I knew that town like the back of my hand. I could drive anywhere. I knew all the shortcuts. Um, San Diego, I've always known all the shortcuts. L.A. was pretty easy to learn. This place, I got to get used to um, loops. Like, we don't have loops in California. Freeway loops. That whole concept of freeway loops is, uh, I'm getting used to it. It's pretty clever, but we don't have those in California. Uh, what is the best baseball movie? Field of Dreams? Major, Major League is funny, but I like Bernie Mac and Mr. 3000 or Mr. Baseball is fun too. Uh, RIP Bernie Mac, dude. Um, everybody likes Field of Dreams. I like uh, Eight Men Out. <laughs> Pretty good. You want a serious baseball movie? Uh, the Lou Gehrig story. And then Major League. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Major League is definitely the most fun. But the Luke Gehrig movie used to play on fucking TV like all the time. And it was so sad. Voyager was rough, but Brad Dourif on it was great. Yep. I don't, I, it wasn't all rough. It was just like, it, it, dude, they really should have played with the Maquis versus the Federation more. They just got along way too quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to miss Vegas. Y'all doing Dallas again. Uh, Mando unchained for a dollar 99. Um, I, I don't know probably, but nobody's contacted us. And honestly, they won't until probably may, but as it stands right now, I, we don't have a place for a meetup. The place we used last year went out of business, unfortunately, because that was such a good place. I was so sad to hear that. Um, but we'll see. We will see. Uh, where's the pineapple, Gary? Not on my pizza because I'm I'm not eating pizza right now. Not eating pizza right now. Uh, but the pineapple, I'll bring a shirt. I'll, I'm gonna have pineapple pizza when I get to Vegas, though. Unless you're asking like if that's code for something, and I'm not sure. Epic fantasy. Thank you for the twenty Australian dollars. Uh, man, Sylvester's wet works. Fuck yeah. Uh. Why couldn't he continue that? Witchblade, Darkness, Jesus wept so good. Yeah, his fucking art was just sick in darkness. It was so fucking sick. Everybody liked the Witchblade, and I did too. But he also had better concepts, like Wetworks. He had better ideas and better concepts. Um, everybody else was just kind of riffing on McFarlane, except for Sam Keith's Max, which was wholly original, crazy fucking insane and really fun and uh i have the i have that you know i've got the bootleg dvd of my original vhs cassette of the mtv show which was basically just a motion comic but it was fucking rad that image was great in the early days fucking awesome fucking loved it i love spawn i have my todd toys right over there my my first run of todd toys and then when todd mcfarlane did the kickstarter for spawn i fucking bought all his shit and uh, I am shocked. Uh, so I had moved twice. And I'm like, fuck, I'm never going to get this stuff. Because he got it out pretty quick. I shot them one email. One email. And I'm like, I'm going out on a limb here. I bought this stuff. Um, but I did move. I don't know if you shipped it or not. I was wondering if there's any way I could just buy another set. That's why I offered Joe. I was like, can I just buy another set? They didn't make me buy another set. They fucking shipped me stuff. Gave me some extra stuff and a Todd McFarlane autograph. They were like, so fucking cool. So fucking cool. So, yeah, I love those. Those reproductions they did, that Kickstarter. Best Kickstarter I ever bought.
Uh, just had a thought. Did you ever read uh, any 2000 AD? I did. I own a bunch of 2000 AD from the uh, 2000 AD from UK. UK used to read Dread every week when I was a young sprog. Hail, yes. Um, so I was I was only able to get it in reprints, and there's nice reprints. But I am a fucking. I love the original. I love the comics. So one day in the last four years, I found a full run of 2000 AD on eBay, paid a lot of money for it, and got it. So I can have the OGs, uh, you know, I, like the, the reprints are the 2080 reprints are really nice. I, I would say go with that. They're cheaper. Um, there's a lot of fun hard covers out there. That's the one thing, uh, Garrett and I bought in a comic store out there. I, I walked out with, uh, like one book and it was a judge dread book. We both walked out with a judge, same judge dread book. Yeah, 2000 AD uh, created a lot of fucking awesome careers. And uh, yeah, little weekly, little weekly mag. Uh, still around, by the way. Uh, Charlie Flint, I will check. It says, I think you missed my super chat from earlier. If not, never mind. Uh, if so, uh, it was my first chat to you, second ever on YouTube. First was Grizzy. I love Grizzy. So please go back and find it, LOL. I'll find it, Charlie. Hang on. Don't even worry about it. I should get music. Talk amongst yourselves. One moment. Hey, we could do music. The look. There's Coop. Old Renaissance nerd. Was it way up there, Charlie? Must have been. I'm asking you like you could just, yeah, it was, Gary. Thanks. Mark. Uh, where's X ray girl when you need her? There it is. All right, gotcha, Charlie. Uh, Hail, first time or semi long time viewer. I'd love to hear more about your thoughts on things that others like to hate on or just ignore. Like your liking of. Uh, what's. Like, what's C? I, I know what The Force Awakens, what's CA? Just answer that in chat, Charlie. Regular chat. What's C-A-T-F-A? What in the hell is C-A-T-F-A? Oh, the first, like, people hate on that? That's why I was like, what? Hang on, let me turn on some fucking music. Wait, people hate on the first Avenger? Fucking send them over. Let's debate that all fucking day long. I will I will have them walking away in shame. Who in the fuck hates Captain America the first Avenger? That's fucking that's a terrible take. You could say, well, it's the average, but hate it? No. Go back and watch it. It's a fucking gem. It's an absolute gem. It's a damn near perfect comic book movie origin. Respecting the source material absolutely absolutely fucking will stand by one of the it's in the top five marvel movies for me easy easy i'll turn on the camera in a second don't worry i don't give a shit the cg bad the story is good the story and acting is good and, and you know what I, I'll, I'll bet i'll go watch that on 4k i'll watch it tonight and I watch it on 4K, and I bet the CG isn't much worse than Ant Man, She Hulk. It's probably better. It's probably better. And uh, my non hate of Batman versus Superman is I will never, ever argue that it's a good movie. Ever in a million years. Uh, I, I get some enjoyment watching the Trinity together because I we're just not going to get it. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. Well, at least I got Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman fighting, <laughs> you know, because uh, that ain't happening anytime soon, even with James Gunn stuff. 
uh yeah they're not introducing the trinity right away best batman costume ever you might not like the batman but that batman costume was the best one the closest one to the comic we've ever seen we have never seen ever a comic accurate batman not ever Kelsey, Aurora Uplinks. Okay. Uh, accident a seller for 20 Norwegian Krona. Don't me movie. It's a 26 ep episode anime remake. Yes, yes, yes. I was talking about the movie. Sorry if I if I uh, sounded confused. No, the I have it. I've got it. Somebody sent it to me. Uh, accident seller. Somebody sent it to me. I, I own it. I, I haven't checked it all out, but I, I own that shit. Uh, somebody just sent me uh, volumes one through five of Dragon Ball, not Dragon Ball Z of Dragon Ball. Oh, there it is. John Goats for five dollars. Gary, that was Dragon Ball for my generation. It would come out on after school. And when the narrator would go next time on Dragon Ball Z, it was hype. Yeah, somebody sent me the first five volumes of Dragon Ball because, you know, after the creator died, may he rest in peace. I'm like, ah, yeah, you know, my kids loved it. My kids fucking loved it. But uh, that's the thing. Like, one of my kids uh, couldn't give a fuck about comics because his whole relationship to it was um, work. Because <laughs> he had to work in the shop in the early days. And I think it just turned him off. Uh, he's a massive gamer, though. Huge gamer. Um, that's my older adult one. My youngest one grew literally from damn near day one, grew up in a comic shop. So mom was doing hair so she can have a baby there. I was doing the lay back retail job. So we made a little fucking baby cage in the shop. Uh, I also had a loft where he, you know, when he was a little burrito, he would just go to sleep uh, in his, you know, in his cradle. And uh, yeah, I'd work and I'd get the little babies puking down my back. I'm on the phone with the customers and he, yeah, he grew up in a comic shop. So he fucking loves comics, but guess what? He likes the old shit. He doesn't like anything new. And all the new stuff he likes, manga and anime. Lost. Like, comics were almost getting a generation back. And then the fucking woke tards, the wokeane addicts came in and fucked that all away. So if any of you are listening out there, let's make comic betters. The fucking cunts like Alex DeCampi or uh, 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 Heidi McDonald. Yes, you drove all the little kids away, the little boys and girls who could have kept your jobs around and kept your industry around. You drove them all away by being a bunch of fucking cunts. Well done. Uh, yes, women and beta men destroyed the comic book, the American comic book industry uh, for good. Not even an afterthought at this point. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Uh, I think someone should do sort of a comedy version of Blair Witch with recent uh, production and funny dialogue could be great. Maybe get locals to help. That'd be the easiest thing to do. Found footage. Of just a bunch of uh, the thing is, it, it, yeah, how would you make it funny? It would have to be there would have to be lots of drugs involved. I mean, not real ones, but in in the show, and then and at some point, they're questioning if the witch is real or not, and the witch is like, "I'm real." It's like, "No, no, I I I took a lot of mescaline." You're not real or, or just an incompetent witch or something, but it, it can't be, uh, it have to be like physical absurdist, like airplane type of humor, which I don't know if people can do right now. Hey Gary, just listening while I'm working, uh, on my 40 K Necrons, uh, wanted to see how you're doing, uh, 40 K wise, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> Any particular stories or lore you really like it? I haven't jumped in. 
GRN Raptor for five dollars. I will, but I have not jumped in. I, I've there's still so much. You know what? That's the great thing, though. It's still out there for me. It's not all shit. There's still things I can go and discover and get into. But thank you, and have fun. By the way. Alex Belfort for $9.99. Just saw your last appearance on Pierce Morgan. Any chances of getting Esther on FNT? She has now become the most requested guest. I, I I'll put X-ray girl on it and I'll uh I'll I'm gonna have to reach out to Paul because uh she doesn't follow me on Twitter. She probably doesn't. I mean, we've only talked twice, but uh, uh she'd be great. Or real BBC, maybe real BBC. We bring drinker on. I think that would be. Seemed in line with yours and Drinker's opinions. Yeah, she's, well, for one, she's a very poised lady. She She's done this before. She didn't let that guy shake her at all. She fucking, she tore him up. She destroyed, well, we all did. It wasn't hard to do. He was retarded. Josh Kelsey drops 10 and walks away. What's up, Josh? Gary, could you please uh, address the tragedy that befell Ed Pisker? I am so damn sick of the Whisper Network. And cancel culture. Uh, QJKR for five dollars. Yeah, I, I talked about it a little on the nooner, and I said then what I'll say now. It's such a f- people should be fucking enraged at what has happened, and with this whisper network, and many people have been warning somebody's going to take their life someday, and somebody did. It was Ed Piscor. Um, and it's sad. The reason I didn't really want to get into it is because I saw a lot of what was being said on Twitter and his family can see that. So I don't know what I have to add that would make them feel better. Ed's dead. Ed's dead. He took his own life, which was ultimately his decision. It sucks. And it really sucks for his family. Um, But the whisper next the ones he named in his suicide note, which I highly recommend everybody read because he went scorched earth. Alex DeCampi. Uh, he didn't name Heidi McDonald. I will. I will name anybody involved in that whisper network. Uh, they have been able to get away with this stuff forever with no repercussions. I mean, I guess we could be happy if you want to have some solace. And I don't know if this is going to help at all. They have to live out their lives as them. Alex DeCampi has to live out her life as Alex DeCampi, who is obviously a really damaged, petty, inhuman fucking ghoul. Who's now protected her fucking Twitter account, which probably is everything to her. And uh, my only concern was I don't want to. I just don't want to be a part. I don't want to see another mob go after another mob, go after another fucking mob and see this thing just perpetuate. Um fuck the whisper network and uh, we'll see we'll see how strong the comic book industry is if they let they let these fuckers in the door they let these fuckers in the door and we'll see how they treat them now and you see that appeasement doesn't work you know bending the knee or, or giving throwing a job at these untalented fucking hacks because they're manipulative fucking sociopaths the best way to deal with a manipulative sociopath is not at all. It's like war games, man. Just don't fucking play. Don't pl- don't play. In my world, um, there was a d- way to deal with those people, but that's not legal. <laughs> in the world I grew up in, there was a way to deal with those people, but it's not legal. So. And no, I don't mean end them there's just a way to shut people up there is a way it's not legal though so uh the best way to do it as an adult who's just online uh cut it out of your life cut it out of your life uh they'll eventually go away and they'll find somebody else to to fucking leech leech on because that's what they are we just call them sponges sponges it's fucking sad it's sad that Ed didn't have the strength to carry on. And he admits that in his uh in his suicide note. But I just feel bad for the family. And I know a lot of people who know him or uh, Danica wrote something really nice on Twitter. 
check that out she knew him robert did a couple of great live streams on it going over it but uh it's ugly man it's ugly it's ugly as ugly as the industry that's your comic book industry that's your comic book industry now couldn't be happier to be away from it but uh and on a much lighter note because um, again somebody lost their life somebody took their own life over this somebody took their we can't take that you know as hard as that is to hear somebody took their own life so they made a choice um and a bunch of people made a choice to pile on this guy and end his life basically and take everything uh, every piece of meaning from him those people made a choice too uh, but Ed's family has to live with his choice. He doesn't have to live with any of it. And those people have to live with their choice. Uh, the sad thing is they probably think they're the victims right now. So uh, what's going to happen is they're going to... Mm, I got to be careful. I got to measure my words here because these manipulative fucks will, will see it as a threat. Well, a lot of people make their living in this industry i wonder how they continue that we'll, we'll see what happens how things play out that's what i would say oh he said too much about it already but uh may he rest in peace may he rest in peace it's really sad all around uh men all this talk oh man all this talk about image always makes me remember my old friend victor L lamas r.i.p who did inks on Top Cow and Nathan Cabrera, who did colors back then, uh, early 2000s, grew up on those guys. That's where I know those names from. A mentee for $10. Those were fun. It was fun Wild West days. It's like, oh, there's something taken on Marvel and DC. And there have been in the, for, uh, in the past, but like, this looks like a real contender. And it's still around, but... It never really competed against Marvel and DC. Uh, you know what? It did. The sales were pretty good for some of the 2010 stuff. Pretty fucking good. Uh, you should do an interview with Armstrong and Getty. Cheers. I would fucking love to. I don't think they know who I am. But I've listened to them for 15 years. Armstrong Getty morning radio show libertarian guys they were out of Sacramento and they were the only tolerable thing to fucking listen to well that Mike Savage was there in San Francisco too uh only tolerable thing to listen to oh my god you should hear the commie fucking radio in San Francisco holy shit it is unbelievable what's more unbelievable is the rest of the world embraced it um, uh, I don't think they know who I am, but dude, I would fucking love to. That would be an honor. Uh, give Feral Historian a check out, specifically a video on Boker, uh, Bocker, interested, interesting Cold War stuff, or maybe a later video. I'll check it out. Clyde Dashing for $10. Thank you for the recommendation. Jay Weatherford, Armored Hunter Mellow Inc., 80s Mecha Anime. Please check it out. Isn't it all Mecha? I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, I meant Star Blazers, Cy. I did the SB anime remake for season one and beyond with 26 episodes. Uh, Dessler was Game of Thrones intrigue. Accidental seller. Thank you for the 50 Norwegian Krona. Uh, Star Blazers. Fucking loved that show, man. That was, it was that. And the 60, well, for us in SoCal. It came on early in the fucking morning before we went to school and we got to see the 60s Spider-Man cartoon and Star Blazers. But you had to wake up at like six in the morning. Aurora Uplinks, black people ghost hunting with token white friends. Well, those are the ghosts. Those are the ghosts. Slain Hope says, Gundam and I are on a crusade to bring awareness to anime called Claymore. It's a violent, gory anime with a female protagonist who isn't a Mary Sue. I don't believe you. No, I'm just kidding. That's that's cool. Nobody nobody just hates the female protagonist. We we hate the Mary Sue, which is which is not a character. It's not a female. It's not a male. It's a blob. 
S is for spinach. When you can't stand it no more. Magnum Popeye for $2. <laughs> I'm just looking at that picture. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, Gary. What's the coolest piece of memorabilia you got signed? I got a Funko Pop signed by Stephen Amell and Carl Urban. Hell yeah. Appreciate what you do. Michael Brokey for five Australian dollars. Well, I would have to say it is. I can't reach it. Um, My comic outpost um uh spider-man variant uh i got signed by stanley i know it doesn't mean much but the spider-man variant has my like my son when he was super young in my very early version of this office in san francisco uh you could probably find it on ebay we had passed a bunch of them out of meetups but i'm out of them now so spider-man when when miles morales met peter parker for the first time uh, so they did a exclusive comic outpost variant and, uh, I signed it, uh, had him sign it. And then he, uh, signed it to my son when he found out that was my son. He was really cool about it. The second one easily is, um, Len Wein, uh, signing, um, uh, Hulk 181 right before he died for my kid. Uh, that that's probably my favorite. I mean, I've got a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff that's I've, I've almost forgotten. Uh, and all my Tony Gwynn memorabilia that he signed. I miss Tony Gwynn. Mr. San Diego. Rest in peace, buddy. But yeah, the, just having my the comic shop that I owned had its own specific variant. And then Stan Lee signed it and then personalized it uh, for my kid. It was just coolest fucking thing ever. And then I got it... Uh, CGC'd and signature verified and stuff. So it's basically one of a kind. Uh, da, 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 da. While stationed in Johan from, I don't know if I pronounced that right, from 91 to 93, saw Dragon Ball and Japanese TV, Metallica, Megadeth, and Dragon Ball care packages had comics. Good times. Oh, that's awesome. Skull Leader 2016. Thank you for the $20. I remember my prison care packages. They came like once a quarter. Uh, is there a decent Rings of Power fan edit hidden in the show? No. The, the, it's not even salvageable. It's so bad. Like your fan edit would be maybe the prologue. That little prologue. I think that would be like the one thing worth a fucking shit. And maybe the clip of the Balrog. That's it. No, there's no fan edit in there. Like like the Hobbit or the Phantom Edit or something like that. No, no way. GRL fourteen thirty six for nineteen ninety nine. Hail Gary, first time chat. I just wanted to thank you for inspiring me and so many others. Currently working on a huge fantasy story that will hopefully be finished in ten years. Well, you're gonna beat George uh, George R. R. Martin. I should. Uh, I hope you enjoy One Piece. Good night. I will. I I love like everything about that world. I do. I'm like, where has this been all my life? And it's like, it's been right here. About a thousand people have recommended it to you. And you went, eh. Uh, Mark Clark for 12 months says, please do some recorded videos on Forbidden Frontiers. Sucks it gets paused when you're traveling. I like more, uh, I like it more than FNT. Not that FNT sucks. Well, I, I love that show too. Um, maybe we should do some pre, that's a good idea. Maybe we should do pre-recorded ones. I don't know why we didn't think of that, Mark. I don't know why we didn't think about it. All right. In the future, well, we're going to start doing videos when we hit a uh, hundred. We're trying to get a hundred thousand subscribers here on Nerdrotic Live. We are uh, under 5,000 away. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, we're trying and uh, we're going to turn this into Forbidden Frontier channel. Of course, all the square ups and nooners will go to Nerdrotic Daily. And this will be completely a paranormal channel. And then we'll go to, we'll, we'll make edited videos. That's that's the thing. Once we get a hundred, but you know what? In the meantime, when we travel, we'll do like a, at least an hour pre-recorded something for you. That's actually a good idea that I should have thought I should have thought of, and uh, I'm a fucking idiot. 
Hi, Gary. I'm uh, new to comics and I'm trying to find Spider Man and X Men comics to read. Do you have any recommendations? Thanks, Gary. Yeah. Um, uh, find the trade of the Phoenix Saga, God Loves Man Kills, uh, even Inferno, which they're kind of getting into. Uh, but uh, Phoenix Saga is fine. And then Dark Phoenix Saga, and that'll get you into X Men. I don't, I always say find, if you can find the, uh, uh, I think they're called the Epic Collection now of just the 60s stuff, but you might not get into that. Uh, for Spider Man, um, I'd find the Epic Collection of Amazing Spider Man. If you want to jump right in and it'll grab you, I forgot what volume it is, but anything between issue 100 and and 200 <laughs> anything so if you can find the e epic uh collection that gets you in from ep if you want to just jump on and get into a little more sophisticated spidey that'll get you going then maybe you can go back because it is hard to jump in on like the 60s stuff but maybe the 70s stuff where i started out that's where like shit really starts kicking uh but yeah Uh, read a story called, uh, I mentioned it in my Madam Web video, uh, Nothing Stops the Juggernaut. It's fucking great. Roger Stern. Roger Stern was the man. Also, he did a graphic novel with um, Bernie Wrightson called Hooky. That's the shit. Uh, I saw you on Piers Morgan and loved it. You and the drinker killed it. Thank you, Hunter. Beck, no, I'll pass that on to the drinker. Thank you for the 1999. Uh, hopefully, they'll have us back. It was tons of fun. It was actually fun. And uh, yeah, when Pierce isn't talking politics, I completely agree with him. <laughs> so I don't know about the, um, if me and Pierce ever get into a 2A debate, that would be interesting because um, he probably has more gun rights than I do. But I just because I don't have them doesn't mean I don't want you to. I want you to have them. I want you to have them. I want you to be able to protect yourself. My wife has an excellent gun collection. Throughout all the ups and downs you've been through, what is what surprised you the most? And Claymore is a uh, bad fucking ass. Okay, now I will check it out. Uh, oh boy, what has surprised me the most? Flagrant triggers for ten dollars. That's a heavy question. Um, this channel didn't see this coming in my life. I was I was on a trajectory where I was pretty happy. I was like content and grateful. So this wasn't like, this was like icing on the cake. <clears throat> it was a fucking shocking. I'm still shocked. I'm st after all putting in this, you know, I, I sit down with like family, like for one, uh, my sister doesn't watch. Neither of my sisters watch. My mom thinks it's the radio. <laughs> my other mom like she knows what's up, but she doesn't watch. One of my nieces watches. I shouldn't cuss as much. Love you. But um, <clears throat> but when I sit down with like my friends from before the before times, they go, This is crazy. I'm all it's fucking crazy. Like it's fucking crazy. So it, this this channel. So again, I was like my blue collar jobs, you know, I wasn't having the time of my life but i wasn't hating it i was like okay i mean i was you know i'm not resigned but i was like grateful to have it i was like this is my job i'm grateful if this is the rest of my life okay i'll get my three four weeks of vacation every year because I, I got a lot of vacation and i'll just you know hang out with my family and just be sober then this happened you know and at, at the time i was like maybe i'll open a comic shop but i need to save up a bunch of money cuz i'm not going to pay rent i wanted to buy the building which is i'm still at by the way i wouldn't i wouldn't no landlords but long story short yeah this 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 gig is the biggest surprise anime recommend uh recommended read read or die megazone 23 the matrix before the matrix uh, all all anime and manga was the matrix before the matrix uh, to the top gunbuster, hell yeah! Uh, from meth to a million, ETA of your book for order. I lose for nineteen ninety nine for two dollars. Um, Melissa was shooting for late summer. I'm shooting for holidays, fall 
holidays because there's some fluff we need to put in it and that's going to actually actually the writing of the book will be fine um but we want some art to put in there and i have to find artists i've got exactly two so far and i need at least five more for one page things but uh, we'll talk about that i actually shouldn't have talked about it but um we'll talk about that soon probably after vegas um but yeah uh this year for sure like this year for sure we're going to do a pre-order thing uh it will be eventually available on uh amazon and barnes and noble it's going to have an isbn number it's going to be a real book right well well in the sense of mainstream so fuck that shit but we're also what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a bunch printed and uh we'll do a, like a pre-order but uh it won't be it'll be a pre-order like a week before we shipped it out, ship it out it won't be like you waiting months it'll be you waiting week or two um while we fulfill it because that's the hard part fulfillment so i gotta make sure all all my ducks are in a row but i'll let you know we're gonna try to keep the the price i mean it's not gonna be tons of beds bells and whistles I, I mean like maybe sign the books if you guys want them signed you know but uh be just the book uh clyde dashing has become a member thank you clyde appreciate it slain hope don't call it a reboot it's a reconfiguration thank you slain hope um and last one of the night von Clar claridge claridge did i say it? van claridge sorry van claridge for 9.99 thank you for all you do you are an oasis of sanity in a desert of madness i'm breaking into comics right now i'm gradually working on my own book that i hope i can get you to read someday well Good luck. Have fun. Have fun. Uh, and I hope I read it someday. I hope it's fucking awesome. But the most part is to have fun. Uh, you're not going to hit it out of the ball. Well, story-wise, you might make it money-wise. Story-wise, you're not going to hit it out of the ballpark first one. Just get that first one done. Just, I mean, I can't, uh, actually, I have done a comic in the past. It wasn't good, by the way. So I can't really relate. But, um, like equated to a YouTuber, our first videos across the board with maybe a very few exceptions. Like I think Robot Head, like his first video was great. Uh, but most of us all, all had to be shitty for a long time. So I don't know if his first video was great, but I just know like he had like three videos and they were all, I, I remember and they're all fucking good. By the way, hail Robot Head. It's good, good YouTuber right there. Um, uh, yeah. Good luck. Good luck to you. And, and thanks everyone in the chat. Thanks for hanging out. You guys were insanely generous tonight. That was, uh, that was as long, that was longer than the square up. <laughs> uh, no, what's this say? Uh, no, no, Gary, your wife had a lot. Yes. I'm sorry. She had a horrible boating accident. She's fine, but she lost all of her guns until they tragically lost an unfortunate boating accident. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, but I'm in Texas though. I'm in Texas, Tracy, but you're right, Tracy. Thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, Eric, thanks buddy. Uh, smooth the DJ and all the lovely mod Rodics, lovely talented mod Rodics. Thank you. Thanks to ev everyone who left a super chat and donation. Uh, how is my long box? You know what? I actually, do, you know, I was asking people, show me your long boxes, but the truth of the matter is I don't have any long boxes. I have none. Cause I got rid of them. I fucking hate them. I got short boxes now. <laughs> I fucking hate long boxes. So I'm a bit of a hypocrite on that one. I'm gonna show me long box. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't have any. I replaced them all with short boxes. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Uh, is George? Did I see George. People saying George. George. Uh, Aurora Uplinks. I sent you an Audible book, a Cypheus Kane, a year ago. Yes, you did. That was you. Yes. Thank you for the two dollars. All right. Um. Again, thank you, Eric. Thank you, all the mod Rodics. Thanks to everyone who left Super Chat donation. Thank, I'm really happy. All the great feedback on last week's Friday Night Tights. Um, it was totally impromptu. It's nothing we can plan. Hopefully, it happens again someday. <laughs> but I'm really glad you enjoyed it. If you missed it, it's on X, uh, pinned on at Nerd Rodics, uh, Nerd Rodic on Rumble, Nerd Rodic on Odyssey, NerdRodic.com if you just want to listen to it, Nerd Rodic on Spotify, Audible, 
Apple Music, it's all there. Hail to the fellowship. Can't fucking wait to see some of you in Vegas. There will be more meetups, by the way. There's going to be a Wisconsin one for sure. Um, and, I'll, and I'll get you those dates. There's one in San Antonio. There's one here. First San Antonio meetup in October. We'll tell you about that one too. So um, thanks, everybody. Uh, appreciate you. I'll see you tomorrow night on Friday Night Tights. Ciao.